Good evening, Jeff. Good evening. And good evening, Dennis and Craig. Hey, good evening, everybody. <clears throat> Dennis, your mouth is moving, but no sound is coming out. There we go. How's that? That's perfect. Good. Okay, thank you. And Skylar is connecting to audio. John, your camera is not yet open. Mm -hmm. And good evening, John. Good evening. There he is. And then uh, I believe you're all ready to go. Hey, smiling faces I'm looking at, smiling faces, all the names I'm reading. We've got lots of folks. Nice. Hey, there's okay. Skyler. Howdy. Well, we love it here. Okay, here we go. Good evening, friends and neighbors. I would like to call to order the Malibu Planning Commission regular meeting of April 17th, 2023, happy birthday, Christian, Jamie, and of course, myself. This meeting is being held by teleconference due to COVID-19 pandemic. That part's still just not true. Commissioners and city staff are participating in this Zoom meeting from remote locations. All votes will be taken by roll call. Members of the public can participate in the meeting or watch it by going to malibucity.org front slash virtual meeting. At that screen, click on one of two tabs to either watch or sign up to speak on particular items. Those wishing to speak must be present in the Zoom meeting to be recognized. Please sign up before the item has been called by the chair. Those wishing to defer time to someone else intending to speak are not required to sign up, but must be present in the meeting. If instead of speaking, you wish to donate your time to another speaker, please click and raise hand on the raise hand button at the bottom of your screen, as I can see Alex is doing now, at the Zoom screen uh, when the public hearing for the item is open. A speaker may accept up to five additional minutes, one minute for each speaker that defers time for a maximum total of eight minutes. And Alex is showing the slide now. Uh, commissioners, when you have comments, please raise your hand and I will call on you in turn so we can make our discussion clear for the record and the public. May I have a roll call, please? Commissioner Hill. Here. Commissioner Jennings. Here. Commissioner Peak. Here. Vice Chair Mazza. Here. Chair Smith. We are all here. You here. have a quorum. Yeah, that's wonderful. Um, roll we'll call. Uh, approval of the agenda. I'm sure we're going to want to talk about this for a minute, but go ahead, uh, Vice Chair. I'd like to make a motion to approve the agenda as staff recommends with item 5C placed before item 5B. And 5B would not be number three on your list then, Vice Chair Mazza? It'd be the last item. Okay, I'd like to switch that around, but you can, I guess we can all talk about that, right? I think it makes sense to get the residential ones done. Uh, I mean, everybody wants to go first, but but I, and I think that the residential ones might take less time. So, at wor worst case scenario, we can make a big dent in five B at the end if not finish it. I also want to say that item four A has been continued before, and they've been waiting in line. Right, which is which is which I feel the same way on that, uh, Vice Chair. So I. I'm, I would like to see us do 4A, 5, 5C second, 5B third, and 5A can go last. Uh, I think it's more important that we get as much as the motel in as we can tonight. And the way to do that is to have the first two residentials because they're both continuance and then 5B. Do I hear from anybody else on that? Uh, I would oppose that. I, I think we need to clear the decks here. Um, you know, we, we've already had 5C uh, come before us, and they did extensive work and experts, 
et cetera, will be here. And uh, the other ones are the same situation. We have a negative, we have a staff recommendation on uh, the sea level item. I think that's 5A, I'm not sure, uh, for denial. So that shouldn't take long. 5A, uh, it's uh, it and so, and so, gentlemen, I just want to be sure that we don't start talking about too much of the, of the merits of the of the projects. But please, okay, I, just, I I would be opposed to not getting rid of the projects, which are very likely to be unheard tonight when they have engineers, architects, lawyers, continuances, all this kind of stuff going on. Um, so we're going to delay. A bunch of projects we won't hear that we can go through. When, uh, Commissioner Smith, it looks like maybe 5A is the least complicated of the items tonight, and it's also residential, so that might recommend putting it before 5B. Okay, I want to hear from my other two commissioners. Uh, Commissioner Peak. Um, I mean, I, I'm okay with moving it however you guys want to move it. I just hope that we can uh, get to all these projects tonight in their entirety. Well, we know the motel is going to be a conversation, so that's why at least like a third. Commissioner Jennings? Yeah, well, my thinking of it is that is that uh, 4A has been before us and has been continued before. 4, 5B has been before us and continued before. 5C has been before us and continued before. I think we ought to try to get those done. I'm, and but moving the uh, the residential project 5C in front of 5B, 5A is a new project hasn't been before us again. I think it has to go at the end of the line. Okay, so we take a straw poll here real quick. Um, we know where you are, Commissioner Hill and Vice Chair Mazza, uh, Commissioner Peak. Um, I kind of think that Jeff's suggestion is probably the most reasonable. Um based but you know it, it all depends on how much time we're gonna get into this stuff so i don't want to take any more time but that's where my support is right now okay so that's to me that's that's three of us that would like to have 4a first 5c and then 5b and then 5a last so can okay. we put that for the record um can we get a right. formal motion from someone yeah we have a motion from commission vice chair Maza. Um, that I did not yet hear a second for. Maybe we vote on that and clear it first. Okay, sorry, you're right. Um, uh, did what was it exactly? I mean, I, I, I don't know. I could go either. It was, it was it was five C before five B. Yes. What, what what was Commissioner Maz's motion, which went unseconded, and then also Chair Smith had one as well. Um, let's let, let, let's handle Vice Chair Maz's, and then we can go to. Okay, Chair I'll, I'll second Maz's. Okay. So, Rose. Vice Chair Mazza. Thank you. <laughs> yes. Commissioner Hill. Yes. Commissioner Jennings. No. Commissioner Peak. No. Chair Smith. No, thank you. Motion fails. All right, I'll move. Uh, what I said before, the order would be four A, followed by five C, followed by five B, followed by five A. I'll second that. And sorry if I'm moving a little bit more slowly this evening. I had about 27 hours of travel all yesterday. He's back um, to Norway, you guys. <laughs> wow. Hey, so, I want 27 hours a day. <laughs> um, um, so 4A, five C, five B, five A. Correct. Yes. Correct. Yes. Right. Um, it's a practical matter. I think that means 5A, the people can go home because I don't think we're going to get there. Yeah. That's bad. That. Commissioner that, Jennings? You probably yes. No, hang on. Hang, hang on. But oh. with that, I just want to caveat that there's still a chance we could do it unless you guys want to formally continue 5A to the, to the next meeting. I just want to put it out there. I don't want anyone to go home. Should A? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Got it. So, excuse but, me. So, uh, apologies, uh, Rebecca. And, that's and, okay. Do we want to, if we're going to go with that order, and we know that there's a chance we may or may not hear that, could maybe we can make a decision as to whether or not we're going to hear that by 8.30. And I know that that's super lame to have them stick around for a couple hours, but I have a feeling by that time period, we'll know 
the direction of this. That's, That's fine. Question. We can do that. We can move question. Adjust it. Do you, do you honestly think that we're going to get through a motel in, in less than two hours? Should be able to. Well, and your commission also has the option of going past 1030 with the quorum vote in favor. Um, so would you like me to call the second motion? Yes, and, oh, and Commissioner Jennings um, made the motion seconded by Peak. Yes. Okay. Commissioner Jennings. Yes. Commissioner Peak. Yes. Commissioner Hill. Sure. Yes. Mission, Vice Chair Mazza. Uh, no, and I, I am not voting on 5A because I'm recused. Uh, is it 5A? Yeah, yes. I'm recused on that. And Chair Smith. Yes. Motion carries. Okay. Uh, posting of the agenda. Uh, the agenda for the meeting was properly posted on April 6th, 2023. And since we're not in the building, we don't have any ceremonial presentations. We do have written and oral communications probably from the public here. And so, uh, Rebecca, if we have any of our fellow citizens that would like to speak, please. So we do not have anyone who has signed up in advance that would like to speak on a matter that is not agendized for this evening. If you are present in the meeting and there is something within the purview of the Planning Commission that you would like to speak about now, please click the raise hand button at the bottom of your screen. And seeing none. I see none too. Uh, okay, then we can uh, we can move over to us, which is planning commission and staff comments and inquiries. Uh, uh, Commissioner Jennings. Yes, I got a call from a friend uh, the other day who uh, bought a property, a vacant property next to his home, uh, and wanted to tear down the old fence, put up a new fence around it, and do a little landscaping but nothing beyond that. And then he was stopped by um, code enforcement when uh, trying to repair or replace the fence and told he needed a permit, but he actually couldn't get a permit because uh, it's not a primary use and he has to have a primary use. So now he's having a house designed uh, because uh, that's the only way he can get a permit to um, uh, do anything on the property. And it's... It, it was a provision, the provision that you have to have a primary use in on a piece of property before you can have a secondary use. Uh, I've always thought, always thought it was uh, one of the two stupidest provisions in our code. Um, the other one being the fact that you can't get a permit to demolish a piece of property uh, unless you're planning to rebuild uh, on that same piece of property. So um, can somebody just maybe shoot me an email as to where that provision is? I, I, I didn't bother to look for it. I know it's, it's either in the municipal code or it's or in the, uh, uh, the LIP. Um, I want to see if I can't uh, pass a little information on to the city council to see whether they can't get that taken care of after all these years. So well, staff, at some point you can let me know about that stuff. That's it for me. Okay. Um, I think... Uh, Vice Chair Mazza. Just a quick comment. Uh, the city would have to determine whether it is in a, a zone that requires limitation of fences to a quarter of an acre. And so there'd have to be some kind of review. Commissioner Hill. Yeah, uh, hi. Uh, um... I, some of you, you probably know I've been pretty sick for a while with what's turned out to be pneumonia and I think we've figured out the right drugs and I'm getting, I'm getting better now, but I'm still coughing a lot. So I may have to sort of step out of the frame now and then, but I'm, I'm right here listening. A um, couple quick questions for staff and some observations they might want to comment on too. Um, what happened with the truck on Las Flores? Was it? <clears throat> yeah, you're muted, Craig. Oh, oh dear. Yeah. So no, you're, not, you're fine. Did you hear nothing mm -hmm. just now? No, we heard you. We heard a truck on Las Flores, and then it, you got muted. Oh, that's weird. Um, uh, 
Yeah, I don't need the gory details, but was it driving down the hill or was it working on that site with the crane extended? I I, I just wonder if there are any lessons to be learned about road safety, because that's not the first truck that's gone off the road up there. Um, meanwhile, the new college is still lit up like a pinball machine. We heard from council a few weeks ago that maybe something was being done about it, and I don't know whether... <laughs> <laughs> that we are to assume that it's been done already or it's still to be done. Um, also, when we consider whether remodel constitutes more or less than 150% of the original without having to be called a new project, I thought we looked back to whatever existed at the time of cityhood, 1991. But recently, I read something that suggested we look back only to when the LCP came into force in 2002. So uh, that would be good to clarify. And then at the last council meeting, we heard that the gas station on Heathercliff has been approved and gone into plan check. And I, I don't really understand why we didn't hear the item after all, because we spent a lot of time looking at it. And there were a number of problematic things about the plan that we never even got to discuss. So um that was a disappointing in, in terms of the process um let's see i uh, marianne riggins was is right about beacon boxes needing more public outreach and publicity i think uh visiting firemen are going to need to know more about what those are about um i support the arts and i've been in a variety of performing groups and do music and photography my partner's a fine artist so i don't just necessarily disagree about an art center some kind of art facilities might be great but i'm really surprised that the arts commission was allowed to go ahead with a survey apart from a more robust process involving community members preferences for all the parcels whether they be for arts the chumash history center sports park swimming pool open space whatever um i heard they were going to do this survey but Apparently, was it was open for only six weeks, and I never actually heard it opened. They got 512 responses, and even if those all came from city, city residents, which seems unlikely, that would still be only 5% of the population. So it just seems like they put a lot of energy into something that's turned out to be not very useful. So, I, again, let's have a process led by an ad hoc council committee and community members, various backgrounds, so that we can craft a more robust survey instrument and publicize it better and do something more comprehensive and grassroots. And finally, I agree with Doug Burge's comments at the council meeting a few weeks ago uh, regarding notifying neighbors at the front end of the development application process. So if they wanna go get PVDs, they can do it then. Then architects can design around all that rather than having those PVDs sprung on them at the last moment. I think Doug's main focus was one, was on the greater certainty that this would provide to the architects and developers, um, and, and it would, but I think it would also be good to get the neighbors in the loop at the front end so they're not going to feel surprised or excluded later on or vindictive or litigious or whatever. Um, so, you know, if a, if a developer with a small d could have a conversation with a few neighbors about what would work best for them, then, then everybody's going to be more likely to move forward with some buy-ins, less friction. Um, and anyway, I, I guess I've said enough on that. So uh, thank you, and, and I'll try to uh, keep up with the pace here tonight. Okay, thank you. Commissioner Peake. Happy birthday, Dennis. Well, thank you. <laughs> um, in the essence of time, I have no comments. Okay, um, I uh, just have a couple. I, I agree with uh, Commissioner uh, Jennings here. Um, I was going to say something about it anyway. We, as, as much as I love all of you at planning, Director Malika, we, it'd be good if we could relinquish some of the stranglehold that we have on just the over-the-counter type folks. If we have someone from Yolanda's group and someone in your group that can help with an over-the-counter that really is an honest to God over-the-counter permit or being able to do something around their home. Um, I'm not forcing blame here. I just know that we've had a lot of things happen between the fire and COVID and then you've got new people and you really, it, at this point uh, with Councilmember Riggins gone, but you do have um, 
uh, Ms. Bauer, you have, uh, you know, she's a senior plan tech and, and you've probably got one or two people that could probably help with over the counter. I know that people work at the counter to earn their stripes to uh, uh, get in the back and, and do their, their work with, with regular staff stuff, but everybody has their shot. But I think that would be great if that's something we could work out or you guys could try and figure out or we could talk about or whatever. I mean, it's, I think it's really important that we, that we try and let people do their, they'll do more if we let them do more with just over the counter and being able to talk them through stuff. So um, if that's, if that can happen, I think that'd be, that would be wonderful. Um, uh, you know, I guess that, that was really kind of it for me. I, um, I think we, uh, we've got a lot to go here and you don't need to hear from me on much else. So I've got that, comments. Ref- what? I have comments. Um, okay. Um, first on the, you know, approvals over the counter. The over the counter people are good at plan check, good at this and good at that, but this is planning. And we have a process where uh, a, a quote customer can come in and pay a fee and have a planning person go over what they're what they want to do and tell them what they have to do. Uh, I think it's two hundred fifty eight dollars or something uh, to have someone. I have I've have gone one situation where a planning tech at the counter gave a permit for grading on a four to one slope on Point Doom, okay, and uh, et cetera. Okay, these are just things that. Every day we we find stuff in this code that gets missed. And I, I the one comment I wanted to make is last I think it was last meeting we had a project on Cuthbert where I had to sit there and waste ten or fifteen minutes convincing people that you can't bulldoze a stream. And then I looked up today, uh, LIP section four point four one, California Department of Fish and Game applications for. New development on sites containing or adjacent to a stream or wetland shall be evidence uh, for primary approval. Let's see. Let me start over again. New development on sites containing or adjacent to a stream or wetland shall include evidence of primary approval by the California Department of Game prior to application. Okay. And we weren't even going to require it at all. So there are nuances in here. They get missed, and you can't you can't find them in the middle of a meeting, and you have to go through all this rigmarole to convince everybody that they're there. And and that's why you need review of planning commissions. Uh, that project could have been stopped if it had been approved the way it was, instantly. And for for quite a while, without that requirement, and it's not fair to the applicant to have something turn around on him years, you know, a year later. Uh, these are outside agencies, and uh, outside agencies take time and et cetera. So uh, I, this idea of just letting non-trained staff in planning, okay, not plan check. Uh, approve things. For example, in Jeff's case, you say, okay, approve all fences without a permit. Well, the, the Coastal Commission says you can't do that. So those are things that have to be considered because there are a lot of them are appealable. Anyway, that's it. Okay. Well, I wasn't really talking about all that, Vice Chair. I was just talking like windows and things. But anyway, okay, Director Malika, your turn. Thank you very much, Chair. I'll try to go through this quickly. Um, to Commissioner Hill's question about the truck, the truck was not uh, operating in the area, in that area. It was, uh, the truck was under underway and it was returning back to wherever it comes from, from working on a job site earlier in the day. Um, the college lighting, that is not something that's a closed issue. We still have yet to complete our final inspection of the property. We are working with them on condition compliance. Uh, so I, I will follow up with staff there, but I know that uh, 
one of my staff members is on that and we are pursuing it. Right. On, on the gas station, uh, the reason why it did not come to this commission is because they withdrew the deviation request. There were new plans that were submitted and those new plans demonstrated compliance with the ordinance of we have for dark skies. And that is now in the plan check process uh, being looked at uh, by our consultant there that we have in um, building and safety. So the new plans were different than anything we saw. That is correct. They revised their plans, yes, and they submitted new uh, new photo metrics to us. And as I mentioned, it, it, the deviation request is what triggered the need for review by this body. Uh, outdoor lighting, outdoor lighting reviews in general are something done at a staff level, unless there's a deviation request. Right. Uh, Richard, now that we have the gas stations are all approved, right, to be installed. Um, this is my understanding. So do they have a period of time to comply? Or so they are, they are approved through the planning department. They are now with building and safety. So the engineering is being checked. And what we have done is code enforcement is active on this. We review them and then give them a reasonable window of time to make corrections. If they fail to do that or not respond to the building official, uh, then we can start up with a citation if needed. Once they're complete with plan check, we then find out what their lead time is to obtain the fixtures and get them installed, and then we hold them to that timeline. Uh, once again, code enforcement's involved, and now we've moved on. We're seeking commercial compliance. Okay. Uh, there's a lot of commercial. Are you just going to do it one at a time, or how, how's that going to work? For the past couple months, we've been reaching out uh, through code enforcement. We were reaching out to clusters, uh, different areas of the city of commercial properties. And unfortunately, the planner who was working with code enforcement and doing a really good job with this has left the city. That was Brian Martinez. He was very much on top of this. So Doug is still involved and I'll have to see who, you know, what planner I can tap. <laughs> I'm trying to hire some more folks. But um, what planner can jump in and, and fill Brian's shoes? But they were sending out letters and establishing deadlines for those guys to come in uh, and, and provide plans to us for review. And the last real question is uh, the tower at the uh, college. Is, is, is that going to hold up a certificate of occupancy to the college and, and what's being done about it? The tower is something that we've been working with the county uh, on. We'll be publishing another update. We sent them an incomplete letter. It looks like they're going to make an application to the city uh, and the FAA about change. So one to the FAA to see if they can change the color. And then if so, the color will become part of the city's application uh, that we have pending. And we are also asking them about an option to lower the height of the tower, or then the other option, if they can't do that, is they're going to have to demonstrate the need for a variance and it would come to this body. So depending on how soon they can get that together will affect how we're looking for the certificate of occupancy and how we'll move forward. But we have an open application or a pending application for the conditional use permit. And then included it as part of that, where we've asked them to roll in the color of the tower, which they're more than willing, at least they were last week, to make an application to the FAA to change the color. And also they're working with us on trying to resolve the issue with height. Thank you. And understand your comments, commissioners and chair, about what gets reviewed at the counter. Uh, I think you know, we all want to get to a better place of efficiency. Uh, it's a matter of, like Commissioner Mazel pointed out, it's a matter of just getting the staff up there that are knowledgeable. And, uh, you know, I would like to see us get back to doing more stuff at the counter in person. The counter is open. I do think that folks submitting stuff through our internet portal, we tend to find a lot of corrections there. Whereas I think if we just all met at the counter, we could you know, explain to uh, the applicant our concerns and maybe make it a bit quicker for them. But um, 
hopefully we can get back to that and get some more folks up there with good knowledge. We have a pretty good group now. They're they're yeah. pretty, they're getting good. I just want to keep them. <laughs> yeah. so they cool. will have a, a review process that they can they can have with a private review process. Yes, we have what's called the pre-design meeting. Uh, if I believe that's what you're mentioning, yes. yes, and we still do that. And right now, the, the the lead on that is I have since Renika has got some good experience with us and is a senior. Renika Brooks is the one that uh, folks we uh, will we schedule an appointment with, and Renika sits down with them to go over the code and what type of application they would need. Okay, great. Um, I was just thinking on the on the gas stations on the lights and how much time they need um you know if it were me i would uh i'd be calling a good electrician that i know here in town one that you probably run into or grew up with or know and and i would ask them the truth about how long it's going to take to get those lights and see what they come up with so um they could probably give you an honest answer of where the gas stations maybe really are but other than that, we can move forward. Thank you for your time, Director Malika. Um, okay, here we go. Consent calendar. Uh, we have previously discussed. We have none. We have new items. 3B1 is uh, receive and file. Oh, good. I'd like to see that. Okay, here we go. Item 4A, continued public hearings. Coastal development permit number 05-081, variance numbers 09-23 and 16-024, and site plan review number 06-32, an application for the construct construction of a new single family residence and associated development continued from April 3rd of this year. We have a, yes, staff report. Who's got this one? That would be me, uh, Chair Hill, or oh. excuse me, Chair uh, uh, Smith. Uh, uh, good evening, and um, I will be uh, giving the presentation for this item. This is um, uh, an item for the construction of a uh, 7,693 uh, square foot two room. Oh, I'm sorry, I have the wrong uh, description here. So, um, my apologies. Um, uh, next next uh, slide, please. The subject parcel is located west uh, of the uh, west uh, sea level drive in the middle of uh, Pacific Coast uh, Highway to the north and Pacific uh, Ocean to the south. And the subject parcel is one of five vacant uh, parcels uh, that are all in line on the same side of the street. Uh, development applications for the subject parcel and the parcel immediately to the north were submitted by the same owner in 2005. Uh, since 2006, the former and new owner um, have been uh, working to satisfy the fire department requirement for uh, providing adequate access on sea level drive from Broad Beach Road to the community's entry gates, uh, an application to widen that portion of uh, sea level drive was um, was uh, granted an approval, and uh, construction is expected to take place uh, soon. Uh, next slide. Encino Creek uh, is located uh, just uh, west of the subject parcel. Uh, according to a biological assessment uh, prepared for the subject parcel, a blue line uh, drainage uh, supporting a degraded riparian habitat expands to the uh, parcel's western property line. Uh, the proposed parcel is located approximately 40 feet from the creek bank. Uh, the projects require few modification, uh, overlaps with the uh, require few modification of existing surrounding uh, residences and other residential uh, buildings uh, in the area. The proposed project does not include any uh, new development within ESHA, uh, and that includes the projects require few modification. 
In uh, February of 2022, um, it's a little bit over a year ago, the Planning Commission uh, requested that other alternatives be considered uh, to uh, maximize the encroachment into the creek and uh, the item was continued to allow the applicant the additional time to explore these other uh, options. The applicant uh, provided a response to the Planning Commission uh, summarizing the proposed project is similar to other development in the area and since the project uh, did not have any direct impacts on ESHA, it did not need to be revised. Um, a letter from the project biologist stated that the house could be moved five feet uh, further away from the creek for the septic system designer, but this would provide um, this would not provide any protection, uh, any further protection to biological resources. Uh, last uh, two months ago, uh, this item came back to the commission. Uh, the commission uh, then uh, requested that the applicant and staff bring additional evidence demonstrating whether uh, relocating the residence is feasible and whether its relocation uh, would result in a reduction to ESHA impacts. The applicant uh, did not provide any um, additional uh, evidence uh, demonstrating whether it could be it would be feasible to relocate the house. Uh, prior to today's meeting, uh, planning staff uh, discussed the project with city specialists, and it was concluded that it is the applicant's responsibility to design the project and provide a feasible alternative analysis. Uh, pursuant to the uh, land use plan of the local coastal program, uh, development adjacent to ESHA, uh, uh, specifically stream ESHA, is required to provide a 100 foot buffer to minimize impacts to habitat values uh, or sensitive species to the maximum extent feasible. A reduction to the required buffer is considered an ESHA impact. Uh, staff's recommendation to deny the project is due to the applicant's correspondence stating that the house could move five feet uh, further away from the creek, which would uh, uh, reduce impacts and provide further protection from human intrusion into uh, the stream and its riparian habitat. It is the city biologist's opinion that increasing a five foot setback to the adjacent riparian habitat from the proposed house, as well as uh, the uh, other future houses on the adjacent vacant lots would provide a commutative biological um, benefit. Uh, next slide. Besides the two variances for construction within Escher buffer and for the septic system setback uh, to the creek, the project complies with uh, all other development uh, code requirements. The proposed development was designed uh, to comply with the required development area. Uh, the required development for the parcel is 25% of the lot area, which uh, amounts to 1,738 square feet. Uh, the proposed project is 1,719 square feet, uh, so about 20 square feet um, below the, the maximum allowed. Uh, next slide. The proposed uh, dispersal field is located 89 uh, feet from the creek, which is, uh, again, less than the required 100-foot setback, um, um, and, and it's subject to uh, one of the two variances. Uh, next slide. Staff is recommending that the Planning Commission deny the proposed project, uh, provided the applicant has failed to demonstrate no other feasible alternatives exist that would uh, increase uh, ESHA buffer and thus uh, reduce the ESHA impacts. Uh, that concludes my presentation and I'm available for questions. Okay, hey, um, Back here, uh, uh, disclosures, right? Uh, Vice Chair Maza? I saw the project uh, last time it was before us. Well, the time before that, a year ago, bought the property. And then I drove by recently to see if anything changed. 
which obviously it didn't. Commissioner Hill? Yeah, I forget if we just made these same disclosures recently, but um, I did revisit it recently with the stream had running water in it, <laughs> and the storm erosion, and it appeared that the creek bank has eroded a foot or two closer to the house site than on our previous visit a year ago. Commissioner Jennings? Um, nothing other than what we had before, except that I spoke on two or three occasions in the last two or three days with Don Schmitz. And that was basically because um, not having the full size plans, I was using my uh, my magnifying glass to try to read uh, the plans that are included in the staff report and trying to understand uh, where the basement was and how removal of the basement would move the project uh, further away from the creek. But apart from that, I didn't learn anything that isn't in the staff report. It's just uh, unintelligible on the staff report. Commissioner Peake. Um, I uh, met with Don on site last week. Um, I think, I guess the only thing I learned from the site visit, it appears that that, although it wasn't, the brush wasn't cut at the time that I was there, it obviously gets cut regularly for some kind of fire clearance in the disturbed part, but uh, that's pretty much all that I learned from my site visit, and thank you. Okay, I, I, I too went to the site, met Mr. Smith's there, uh, walked the site, looked over the edge, looked at the stream. Um, stream looked pretty good to me. I couldn't see too much erosion there. I could see where it had come up a little bit at one time, but not not anything like I got this thing here behind me over here at Trancas Creek, this baby's running, still running. Um, okay, we will go to, uh, Mr. Schmitz, is he? I have a question. Wait. Well, actually, Commissioner Hill has his hand up first. Is that from before? Commissioner Hill, is that something now? No, it's just a new, for clarification, there's some talk com comparing this parcel to others in that row there and what it all means. And the applicant had an aerial showing uh, CDPs on at least two other lots. Um, and I just wondered, Two, there. I see two. They have applicant date, application date numbers of 2005 and 2015. Neither of which would still be active within the five-year time limit. So, can we just clarify? Are there active permits on the west side of the street there, and and what is their proposed square footage? I, That's the, who's um, that directed to? I, I can answer the question. Sorry. Um, the last time I checked, uh, there were uh, three other. So there is there is one application for the property immediately to the north, as as mentioned in my presentation. Um, there are three other vacant properties that um, there was an application submitted to the city uh, years ago, but those applications expired. Mm -hmm. uh, I am not aware that any new applications have been submitted for those three lots. So the one adjacent to the north is still open, and and uh, how, do do we consider that in some way in terms of uh, potential cumulative impacts, et cetera? It's uh, it's still open, and uh, it is pending a planning commission hearing. All right. Thank you. I want to continue that question. Uh, you're required to studying known projects for cumulative impacts. So I, I I don't think you quite answered Craig's question. Is there anything that's been presented to us that has cumulative impact studies on adjacent properties and the effects on the stream? So um, I guess to answer the question, I think what you're asking is from a CEQA standpoint, whether we need to analyze the two projects from a cumulative uh, impact standpoint and uh, pursuant to the uh, categorical exemptions in CEQA, um, up to three uh, single family residences in um, what they define as urbanized areas uh, can be exempt. Now, um, how they define it is based on um, a, a census map that um, 
identifies urban areas and this area of Malibu is identified in that map as urbanized. So per the CEQA uh, definition, um, you know, this is still categorically, categorically exempt from the CEQA uh, requirement uh, of uh, requiring an initial study. But uh, in terms of your decision, you can certainly um, look at the cumulative impacts as a whole and uh, you can, you know, that can uh, play into your decision. Okay. And then, as I said in, in the preliminary comments, uh, section 4.4.1 requires preliminary approval by Fish and Game. Has that been before uh, uh, application is complete? Uh, is, is that been done? So um, when we've had projects um, that do not have uh, direct uh, construction, uh, uh, not, not fuel modification, but the direct construction within riparian or uh, a stream area, um, we have uh, sent those applications to Fish and Wildlife and the uh, responses that we've been getting uh, consistently from them is that they do not they do not need to review those projects. But we haven't. Have we sent this one, or they sent sent it back saying they don't need to review it. So we did not send this one. Just again because of our uh, the history that um, we've experienced is that this wouldn't require it. But we can. This is certainly something we can we can do uh, for this or any future project. Yeah, because it says it is required on 4.4.1. Okay, uh, that's it. Commissioner, oh, uh, do we need to have, we already had everybody said they watched all the tapes if they weren't here last time, is that sufficient? Yes. Okay. Commissioner Jennings? Yeah, I have two questions. I, I'm a little confused by the way you postured this uh, as my understanding is that we are uh, judging this application that's before us and um, to make a determination about this proposal. Um, and I'm not sure how the, uh, the fact that the applicant failed to come up with any other alternative designs plays into that. Aren't we just judging this application, this design that's in front of us? Or haven't we judged it already? So, so part of part of every uh, coastal development permit, uh, one of the submittal requirements is that the applicant provide a um, a feasible alternative analysis, right? Uh, an analysis that demonstrates what other options were considered and, you know, the reasons why those other options uh, wouldn't work. And, you know, that that analysis is used to then uh, for, for staff to then write um, finding three of the local calls or the uh, LCP, uh, CDP, excuse me. Uh, and and so um, it's, it's just, a, again, standard practice and, and a code requirement. And so, in in this case, um, that analysis was was not was not provided. Um, it was uh, specifically requested by the commission uh, over a year ago, and um, that information has has not been submitted to us. And and, and so what? And so we are unable to um, demonstrate whether it would be feasible to push the house further away from ASHA. And if it would be fe feasible to do so, then the code uh, requires that development be as far away from ASHA as, as feasible. Um, the requirement is 100 feet. Uh, we understand that 100 feet is not an option, um, but um, we need to try to site the house as far away from ASHA as possible. Yeah, all right. I'm trying to get it. I understand what you're saying, but uh, I guess my question is, so they're not being uh, what you view as an adequate alternative uh, citing presentation being made by the applicant. 
uh, the hearing's over, right? There's no place to go. Correct. So, barring having that information, that's why staff is making a recommendation for for denial. Now, again, you may have a different opinion and may see it differently, and you may uh, decide that you have everything you need to make a decision, and you can still decide to approve the project. Okay. Well, uh, and there was one other question, but I, it it, it uh, I just lost it out of my mind. Go ahead. I'll I'll pass. Uh, I just want to comment that we're required to make a finding that that study has been done. And it's not John. It's not up to us just to say, well, even though we require, we're required to make the finding, we're just going to shine it on. It's a requirement. And uh, John, I said we, we, we keep this kind of just the factual questions and then we can deliberate on all of these robust items after public comment and the applicant speaks. Okay. Okay. Very good. So we have public comment. Yes. Um, so this evening, the applicant team will be represented by Don Schmitz. He also has Andrew Ford, who is the biologist for the project, John Yaroslavsky, and Fred Gaines available for questions afterwards and is intending to keep a portion of his time for rebuttal. So, um, Alex, if you could bring up the presentation for Don Schmitz. Audio check. Can you all hear me? We can. Yes. Okay, great. Uh, so why don't we go ahead and start the clock. Uh, my name is Don Schmitz on behalf of the applicant. I'd like to start off with the assertion by staff that we did not do an alternatives analysis. That's just not true. We spent tens of thousands of dollars analyzing and providing information the fact of the matter is, and this is reflected in the correspondence that has been presented to the commission by staff itself, that if we were to eliminate the basement, that we could, in fact, move the house a whopping five foot back from where it is currently proposed. That is about it. We, did we do architectural plans and grading plans? No. We simply disagree that that is, uh, is uh, directed by code. Next slide, please. So we did do a very comprehensive alternatives analysis, and we point out that in the uh, February staff report, staff correctly stated that there is no direct impacts to ESHA expected from this proposed house. There simply are no impacts to ESHA. Next slide. So the all these properties on West Sea Level Drive, West Sea Level Drive, are blanketed by the requisite setbacks from the creek. Next slide. So uh, yes, there's the permitting history there. Uh, as you can see, it's lengthy and you can see the parcels are all of similar size and configuration. Next slide. The setbacks that you have uh, from the stream are, we're right in there, we're consistent with those. We have a greater setback than uh, many of the property owners. Next slide. Same is true for the septic setbacks. We have 90 feet and uh, septic systems have been located closer when it's absolutely necessary. We're not asking for any special privileges here by this variance application. Next slide, please. The size of the home, which is before you commissioners is less than the average. Nobody's proposing a giant mansion here. It's an 1800 square foot home. As you can see, there's uh, most of the homes in the area are of larger size and staff report uh, that was before you uh, uh, last year uh, reflected that. Next slide. The height of the house is also right dead smack on the average height of the house. This is not a scope of development, which is extraordinary. Next slide. Now, uh, back in, in 2006, the depth of the groundwater was tested, and it was tested uh, taking into account unusually high rainfalls. Next slide. What's important to note from this, and this was an important uh, point raised by Commissioner Maza at the last hearing, because he was looking at the fact that the septic system was designed in 2019. Uh, what he was not aware of is that when the groundwater testing occurred was a period of time where we had 246% of our normal precipitation rate. It was a very, very, very wet year when the depth of groundwater was tested. Next slide. You can see here, uh, and we got some rain, guys, last time I checked in this in this last year. Uh, we had 191% to 185% 
uh, of our normal precipitation. So when the depth to groundwater was tested, we actually had more rain in this area than what we had in, in just this, uh, a very significant last year. Next slide. So the, uh, uh, the uh, on-site wastewater treatment system uh, was designed by John Yaroslavsky. And you can, uh, as has been relayed to you before, it is a state-of-the-art system designed with redundant disinfection. It is of the highest standards. Next slide. It includes not only a state-of-the-art, uh, very sophisticated uh, uh, tank, it has an ultraviolet disinfection unit, and it has a stage two, not just chlorination to further purify the water, but a dechlorination component to make sure that uh, the water is, is tertiary water quality. It is extremely clean. It will be going out through a microdosing system located as far away from the creek as, as it can possibly be engineered. Next slide. Therefore, the system will have no adverse impacts to the surrounding water bodies, the diurnal creek, or groundwater. No adverse impacts. This speaks towards assertions of concerns over cumulative impacts. We cannot be contributing to cumulative impacts from our wastewater because we will have no impacts on that creek. Next slide. So the drainage plan was designed by Tricia Coffey. It comports with 17.4.2 of the Malibu LCP. Next slide. It is a state-of-the-art drainage system. All runoff will be collected and put through uh, uh, vegetative uh, bioswales for water polishing before it is discharged. Next slide. In this staff report, staff is saying that the proposed residence is approximately 50 feet from the stream flow line and 20 feet from the repairing habitat. Next slide. However, in the previous staff report, they correctly stated, though the creek is located off site, there's no functional repairing habitat on the subject property. Which statement is, can, is correct? Well, the first statement is correct, or this one, excuse me, back in February. We are having no impacts on the repairing habitat, and there is no repairing habitat on this property. Next slide, please. Uh, and we have given a supplemental report hot off the, the press from the consulting biologist, Sandy Ford, that there's no repairing vegetation within the boundary of the subject property and no repairing vegetation will be removed for this project. Next slide. In the uh, 2022 staff report, again, the uh, staff asserted correctly that there's no direct impacts to Eshin. Next slide. In this staff report, they're saying, well, there's no impacts, but the new development by its very existence is an impact. And any alternative that would increase the ESHA, the setbacks from ESHA would reduce impacts on the ESHA, even though there's no impacts on the ESHA. Next slide. And in the uh, previous report done by Mr. Ford, in his professional opinion, moving the house five or even 10 feet closer to the street would have no quantifiable positive biological benefits to the drainage area. There'd be no changes to the fuel modification, runoff noise, or light. Moving the house back does nothing to further protect the ESHA because we're not impacting the ESHA. Next slide. And of course, this has been the position of the city historically. Here you see the 100 foot setback from a very serious stream ash of Malibu Creek where the Tesla superchargers were approved. You can see the 100 foot setback and the yellow dots where you put in those charges. Next slide. You are aware what these look like. They're just your standard electric car chargers. Next slide. And this was approved with an administrative coastal development permit with uh, Vice Chair Mazza making the motion, it was approved unanimously. Why? Because those charges are not going to have any impact on the Malibu Creek ESHA. Uh, moving things around because it's within the setback just flies in the, in the face of the LCP and sinus. Next slide. So uh, the variance is, does not constitute a, 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 a special privilege. And correctly so in the previous staff reports, uh, staff stated that strict application of the zoning ordinance would deprive this applicant of the, of the same development uh, configuration and property rights that everybody else on the street has enjoyed. Next slide. They also correctly stated that there is no way to avoid a variance for construction within the stream mesh buffer. There's just no way we can avoid it. Next slide, please. Section 4.7.1 of the LCP, LIP, has very specific development standards, commissioners. Uh, parcels where all feasible building sites are ESHA, and we're not building in the ESHA, or ESHA buffer 
shall be 10,000 square foot or 25% of the parcel size, whichever is less. 25% of this parcel is 1,738 square feet. We're proposing 1,719 square foot. This is a very specific development standard from the LIP, which also promulgates heights, setbacks, sizes, amount of grading. Applicants have a right to rely on this. This is the development standard, not just what some folks might want to do. This is the development standards and we're consistent with it. Now it's a two prong, excuse me, policy. Next slide, please. The other section is that the development must be cited to avoid destruction of the repairing habitat to the maximum extent feasible. We are not removing, we are not impacting or destroying any of the repairing habitat under the current location, or if we were to move that house back five feet, I would say that qualifies for being consistent with avoiding destruction of the repairing habitat to the maximum extent feasible. Next slide. We're not destroying it at all. The residence is located entirely within the disturbed area of the property. Next slide. There's overlapping fuel modification. There will be no new fuel modification for this house. Everything is already completely cleared and the fire department doesn't require, uh, excuse me, require clearance in the repairing corridor itself, which has not widened by the way. Uh, we had our uh, next slide, we had our biologist uh, check that out. It's a, it's a rocky, uh, deeply incised channel. It has not widened out. Existing legally established fuel modification zones do not meet the definition of ESHA. There is no ESHA in this area except that which is in the bottom of the creek itself. Next slide, please. Zero minus zero equals zero, commissioners. Next slide. So if you have zero impacts to the stream and groundwater, and there's zero brush clearance drainage impacts, modifying and increasing the setback provides zero benefit. Next slide. So it would be something that would be very painful to the applicant. It would be no benefit to the habitat and it would do nothing for any potential cumulative impacts because if we are having no impacts to the creek then we cannot contribute to any cumulative impacts next slide please so with that i'll wrap it up please stop the clock and we'll retain the remainder of our time for rebuttal thank you don and you'll have uh, about four minutes 26 seconds for rebuttal our first public speaker will be elizabeth lynch and she'll be followed by Pat Healy, John Nakano, and Barry Woods. Hello. Hello, we can hear you. Oh, good. Um, basically, uh, my comments are pretty much the same that I made last time, but I would like to start out and, and make a comment regarding Pat Healy's commentary on the Chumash uh, issue and the archaeology that's involved. And basically, I felt it's a good article and want to uh, make it part of my record. Having said that, uh, we also have to consider there's a basement and uh, the uh, potential impact of finding uh, remains are not very remote. Uh, it needs a very a different level of archaeological study. Uh, there are actually burials of, of uh, the Chumash Indians very, very nearby, at the next, you know, next door. I also really want to take umbrage with the fact that he is, Mr. Schmidt, the applicant's representative, is taking a lot of leeway and comparing uh, a neighborhood that was developed under a much different era, far below uh, the time that it turned into cityhood. He's trying to make apples look like apples and apples don't, they're not, it's apples and oranges. Also he's in neighborhood standards. He's using the wrong sort of, he left out the fact that a thousand foot basement should be included in that chart. And if it was included in that chart, it would be well beyond the medium to median development. He cannot come in 
buy a restricted piece of property and say, oh my, I have the right to do this. No, it was restricted and it was very visible. And I want the uh, commissioners to really uh, take a good hard look at the document that I submitted on this. And uh, with that, I, I would like to end uh, my part of the conversation. If anybody has any questions, I'm here to answer. Thank you, Elizabeth. And then our next speaker will be Pat Healy. Can you hear me? Yes. Uh, SLOGO supports the staff report's recommendation for denial. When the applicant purchased this property, they were aware of the numerous constraints, and yet the applicant wants to develop the property to the greatest extent feasible, ignoring the lots of constraints. Definitely further studies are needed. In addition to this lot, there are four more substandard lots along the creek, which will be developed. The cumulative impact of five wastewater systems could very well pollute the creek. Good planning dictates before you develop anything on this part of parcel, the city uh, should study the cumulative effect of adding five wastewater treatments along the creek. Since the creek outfall is into an area of biological significance, instead of piecemealing these septic systems one at a time, their cumulative impact should be studied now to protect the creek and the ocean water quality. After the study, the city will have a better idea of what can be done. According to the staff report, the total reliable square footage is 25% of the lot size. We recommend that the residents and all future Creekside residents be designed to be 1,093 square feet, the same size as the Creekside residents at the entrance of Sea Level Drive. The city has to be confident there'll be no basement flooding or the applicant will not hit groundwater during excavation. Therefore, an updated groundwater study must be done. We disagree with the archeologist's assessment that there are no cultural resources on site. The Shumash built their villages besides creeks. A Shumash burial site was south, south of this property. It's very possible there may be Shumash remains and most likely artifacts at this location. The city, clearly the city condition of having an archeologist monitor the first three feet of excavation is not enough. All excavation and soil disturbance must be monitored by a qualified Chumash monitor and archeologist, and they have to be on site during all so soil disturbance to be sure artifacts and bodies are preserved. Let, um, since this, um, this area is a designated mo monarch overwintering site, the project landscaping should be revised to consist of native drought tolerant fire resistant uh, pollinator plants, including milkweed that bloom at different times of the year. In conclusion, this project should be denied. A smaller project built, additional studies must be done before anything is built. And, um, based on the outcome of the studies, the project redesigned. Thank you. Thank you, Pat. Our next two speakers will be John Nakano, followed by Barry Woods. If you're present in the meeting and would like to speak on this item but have not signed in advance, please click the raise hand button as these other speakers are presenting. Hello. Hello. We can oh, hi. Hi, I'm John Nakano. Um, I'm one of the five. I actually own the property the um, that is two properties away from the property that we're speaking about. I think my first kind of concern is, is like, I know someone had said that when we bought these properties that we were well aware of the two mash and all these other uh, constraints that you're talking about. And I do not believe I was well aware of that. Um, maybe that's my fault of my due diligence, but no one has ever told me about all these things that I'm hearing tonight. Um, that's just kind of my first point, and I get where everyone's coming from. This is a, it's a, a big argument here. Um, <clears throat> I just want to say that, like, 
you know, I've, I've spoken to Garo and he's the, the, the person who the family was developing this property. And, you know, we're families who just want to build a, a small property. We're not trying to destroy land. We're not trying to, to pollute water. And I just wanted to, you know, put my, um, uh, I just wanted to give my support of Garo and his family in doing something like this. Cause I've, I'm pretty sure I'm going to be doing the same thing. Um, I guess the biggest thing for me is, you know, if what scientists, do you guys want us to use uh, if all these scientists and I'm a doctor, listen, all these doctors or if, if so all these scientists come back and they said that there's nothing that's going to affect this project with the stream or water. I don't understand exactly what you would want then. Um, what type of scientists are we going to get that's going to tell us something different? And that's kind of what I just wanted to say. Thank you. Thank you, John. Our next speaker will be Barry Woods. Uh, good evening, and thank you for allowing me to speak on the behalf of this project. Um, my position is actually to approve it. There has been Garl, uh, who I've spoken to over the last couple of years, where we live on Wesley Low, has worked on this application for years and has spent untold thousands of dollars providing every study and report the city required, as Mr. Schmidt has mentioned. Uh, there is no impact uh, on the hope that, that there might be too much remains. You, I don't think you can actually deny somebody. If they found them, then construction would stop, and there are protocols for that. But you can't just say because there may be, you can't do this. Uh, the city the planning department originally recommended approval. Uh, the city ERB and biolog uh, biolog biologist approved the project. Uh, which I think is a, a great design for, it, especially in keeping in the neighborhood. It's not too big. It's uh, in keeping with the uh, elements of the neighborhood. Uh, and it's actually smaller than the average size of all of our 13 homes here. Um, and I basically urge the planning commission to approve the application uh, to allow uh, Garo and um, the other, you know, John and the other people who own lots here uh, and sort of have the right to build when there is no impact. And that has been brought up time and time again. Uh, and I don't know where the disconnect is that they're saying there is a ESHA problem, there is a drainage problem, and there is a septic problem when, in fact, everybody has proved that there is not. So on that basis, I would like to see it approved so uh, the, the Bedrosian family can uh, build a home here. Thank you. Thank you, Barry. Our next speaker will be Joe Drummond. Birthday, Dennis. And we can hear you. Okay, great. Um, I just wanted to say that, I mean, if there's high groundwater and there's all this rain happening, I mean, that, that can't be good when it's right by a, a, a stream. And if there's five other projects that are going to be dumping septic in there, that has to be, I mean, there has to be a reason that our planning department denied. Like it's, it's got, it has to be serious. And I just wanted to mention that I had a meeting with two Shumash women last year and they were angry, like angry about all of the burial sites that have just been bulldozed and nothing saved over the years and them being pushed out. And I mean, it's just, it's, it's terrible. So I don't think that should be minimized in any way. Um, they just, I, I mean, I was trying to get one of them to run for council, but they can't afford to live here, unfortunately. So that's, they need some kind of reparations and by the way, but anyway, that was, those are my two cents. Thanks. Thank you. And then we'll return to Don Schmitz for the applicant team. If you'll give me just a moment to adjust your clock. And we're ready. Could you please go to slide 38 before we start the clock? On my presentation. Uh, two slides down from here. I have already thanked the commission. There we go. Okay, now we can start the clock. Uh, commissioners, again, Don Schmitz on behalf of the applicant. The setbacks from this house, this proposed house, is on average 58 feet. Ms. Lynch's house averages 32 feet away from the creek. And her house was approved under the Coastal Act, and the house directly to the south of hers 
was approved by the city of Malibu that has a 44 foot setback. Next slide, please. We're not comparing apples to oranges, we're comparing houses to houses. And the septic setback that we have is right in keeping with uh, the other properties in the neighborhood. Next slide, please. The house is of uh, the average height. Next slide. The house is of the, it's less than the average slide. And Mrs. Lynch's uh, comments in regards to the basement, everybody knows within this hearing that basements are excluded from total development square footage. Uh, and in fact, these larger homes that don't have basements have a greater impact than what the applicant is proposing. Next slide. The uh, wastewater system will have absolutely no impacts to that creek, period. And there has not been a shred, not a scintilla of contravening evidence from anybody. That's why it was approved by the city health department and the city biologist. Next slide, please. Uh, and the uh, consulting biologist has said that moving the house back five feet or even 10 feet would have no advantages to the creek. It's not going to improve the uh, status of the creek because this project as currently designed is not going to have any impacts to the creek. Again, nobody has provided any contravening scientific evidence. Next slide. Section 4.7.1 is the law. That is the design standards and it specifies that we must have a building site area no more than 25% if we are within the ESHA buffer. We comply with that design standard. Any other option here is arbitrary and capricious. Next slide. Additionally, it's, it specifies that we shall minimize destruction of the repairing habitat. We are doing no destruction to the repairing habitat whatsoever. We comply completely and concisely with section 4.7.1 of the LIP. Next slide. This project was in fact approved by the Environmental Review Board. They said before we get a building permit that the Broad Beach Road widening project must be approved. It was approved and there is a condition on this project that we don't get to build until such time as that road is improved to fire department standards. The ERB said, go get your fuel modification approval from the forestry division. We did. They said, show all fuel modification outside the property lines. Well, the forestry division doesn't do that, but as I've already shown you, it's already fuel modified in the entire area, except for the flow line of the creek, and we're not going to touch it. Additionally, the uh, ERB said that the city biologist should review and approve the updated landscaping plan to verify that it's going to be consistent with the butterfly habitat. Next slide, please. We did that. This speaks towards the comments from uh, Ms. Pat Healy about the landscaping plan. It is exactly what the ERB told us uh, to do, which is why the city biologists approved the fuel modification plan. The city biologists approved the building site location, the drainage and the septic system. And then also uh, in conclusion, uh, as the concerns pertain to the archeology, span uh, we did give a very competent archaeological report, which was approved by the city, but in our correspondence we sent into the city on March 22nd, we are more than amenable to accepting a modification to the special condition, uh, as opposed to having a monitor uh, down to three feet, that we have a monitor on the site uh, to the bottom of all excavations or until we get to what is called archaeologically sterile ground. We are every bit as sensitive to this issue in regards to the cultural resources on the site as uh, the opponents who have uh, testified against this project. So uh, with that, I, we comply with all the rules, commissioners. We're not going to have any impacts. This project deserves your approval, and I thank you for your time. My team and I are available for any questions that you may have. Thank you, and I believe that concludes our speakers for this item. Okay, great. Thank you to all. Um, well, I've got three hands up. I have it, uh, Dennis, before we start, do we want to let the people from item uh, 5A go? Because I don't think we're going to get to that based on how long this is taken. I have a motion, I make a motion to continue that item to whatever staff recommends. Uh, I'll second that. Um, Good point, Skylar. Let me take a quick look at the calendar for the next meeting. <coughs> do we want to do this after this item with the clear? Obviously, I believe the indication is 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 
he's clear I mean, currently. I'm, I'm, I'm fine to do that. It just seems silly to keep somebody hanging no. on the phone for another half an hour, 45 there's, minutes. There's, Patrick, there's absolutely no chance we can approve. No, no, no I, I totally understand that. It, it just seems a bit odd to take a motion on another item in the middle of, of I, this I item. Don't, I don't disagree with you at all. I'm just trying That's to- That's all I'm saying. illegal. You, 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 Vice Chair Mazza, you, you are correct. Off the top of my head, I am not aware of anything that would prohibit it illegally. So continue, Ms. Evans. I apologize for the interruption. Not a problem. Um, we did, we do have, I believe we will have space available on the May 1st meeting. I am waiting for confirmation, but I believe one of the items scheduled for that meeting will be moving off. Um, to a later meeting. So if that's the case, I think May 1st, we would be able to accommodate it. Okay, that'd be wonderful. Okay, I amend my motion to May 1st. If Craig accepts it. Yeah, I'll accept that. <laughs> okay, I and have to take a quick roll call. Vice Chair Mazza? Yes. Commissioner Hill? Yes. Commissioner Jennings? Yes. Commissioner Peake? Yes. Chair Smith? Of course. Motion carries. Okay. Back here. Good call, Commissioner Peake. Um, all right. We uh who wants to Commissioner Hill, I think you you and Commissioner Jennings were almost in a tie when the hand went up, so I just called your name, so go ahead. Uh, Jeff's hand was up first, but... Okay, then go ahead, Commissioner Jennings. Okay, I have... Uh, I remember the question that I was going to ask you earlier, Adrian. I sent you an email today asking um, if uh, the opinion of the city biologist that you express on page three of six uh, is reflected anywhere other than on page three of six? Did she write a report? Did she, is she here? Um, she's here. She's, she's here. here, yes. Okay, fine, thank you. Um, so the, the the next question is, is it staff's position then, that we, we've gone through this before. Uh, the, the applicant says there's there's no impact on, uh, no quantifiable impact on ASHA or, or sensitive resources. Uh, your position, staff's position, as I understand it, is that it is the setback number itself, which is a resource that needs to be protected. And uh, without regard to whether there is any other impact on, on resources. Is that, is that, do I correctly understand your position? So, mostly, yes. Um, the so it's not just it's not just a number although although um again the code has a required 100 foot and just because they can't meet the 100 feet doesn't mean they get free reigns to place the house zero feet from the asset right so right it has to be again pushed as far back as feasible uh per the code but also the reason that there is a buffer for stream ASHA that requires development to be uh, at least 100 feet is to uh, keep uh, human intrusion as far away from ASHA. And there is, there is impact as a result of human intrusion. There's noise, lights, et cetera. And pushing that house further away reduces that impact. Now, we're talking about potentially five feet, which I understand is not much, but when you're talking about five feet times five houses, then again, um, we can consider the the impacts of all five houses. Now, again, it is- How, how can we do that, uh, Adrian, since we don't know where those five houses are going to be located? Well, uh, again, it's, it's depending on your decision today, uh, th that's, that decision would be likely uh, used by future developers. 
And if the decision is we need to provide this analysis and we need to make sure that the house stays as far away, then we would make sure to have that analysis for all the other houses and we'll make sure that those houses are as pushed to the road as possible. Okay, I've got some questions um, about exactly where and how the um, the elimination of the basement is going to result in moving the house further away. But I'm going to pass for the moment and let Greg have his turn, and I'll get back to you on that. I'm just I'm just struggling with the idea of how plastically, physically. The, the house is going to be moved back away, considering the fact that it is the northern end of the property where the garage is, that is the closest to the stream. So I'll get back to you. Yeah, my, my, my comments, uh, I think, follow right on, on, what, on that discussion. Um, LIP 4.64A, variances that modify buffers or ESHA protection standards shall not be granted except where there is no other feasible alternative mm -hmm. for citing the development. Uh, section 4.7 sets the backstop at economically viable use. That's, you know, down, we can argue what that is, but we're talking about the 800 square foot thing. So basically we need that other, those other feasible alternatives. Uh, also in this same bracket is LIP section 4.64B that um, modifications to development standards that are not related to ESHA protection basically are uh, ESHA shall be permitted where necessary to avoid or minimize impacts to ESHA. I, I didn't read that right, but basically ESHA protections take precedence. So we're looking at what are the alternatives. We didn't get the alternative write up from them. And it just seems like by now somebody would have done the math, as it were, to figure out, just for example, if, if you were to remove one bedroom, how much further from the stream would that make it? Uh, removing one bedroom would also result in the reduction of the dispersal area in terms of the, the impact by how much? How many feet would that buy? Elimination or reduction of the basement size would also reduce the dispersal area some amount. Um, and so, and then looking at those various sorts of accommodations, how much would they yield? Would they be additive or, or overlapping or redundant? Or, you know, what, what would we get about out of any of these minor changes? And to me, it seems like the precedent here already, the most immediate one is the parcel up on the north end, uh, closer to the entrance where they brought uh, the application and the planning commission at that time required them to minimize things to fit it onto the site better. And I had some discussion with Adrian the last time about, I looked on the map and it said, well, it looks like that, uh, that house is about 75 feet from the blue line. Um, whereas this house was proposing 50 feet from the uh, blue line. And Adrian said, well, actually that house is, is, is about 67 feet from the blue line. In other words, 13 feet further from the blue line than this house is proposing. And that house is also something down around, I forget the exact number, but it's it's not much more than a thousand square feet. So, you know, I'm not saying they, this house needs to be a thousand square feet, but it, it, it seems like we have a lot of scope to comply with 4.64a where, uh, where we have the buffer there, we're required to minimize it to the extent feasible, as, as everybody has said, and we just haven't made that effort. And I guess I have some other points on things. Um, well, and I'll say one of the things that we also don't know about is the groundwater study they did. Uh, they correctly pointed out that 2004, 2005 was a huge rain season, um, but the groundwater study they did was April 6, 2006, more than a year later, so I don't know how valuable that is in terms of measuring the groundwater level. And they've just made a point about saying that this year is a really pretty high level, almost 200% of average. So that, that sort of makes the case that they should be doing the groundwater test now. Um, so I'll leave it at that for now and, and let somebody else t t t take over. Thanks. Vice Chair Maza. <clears throat> yeah, I'd like to put up Don's uh, 
first slide he pulled up just recently with the with the aerial view diagram of the stream. I think he said it was number two, but we just had it up. Yep, there it is. Okay, I forgot to say in my uh, recusal or whatever it is, not recusal, uh, that I was at the hearing for the house at the top that's 67 feet. Now, you can see that that's, they say it's 67 feet, but you look at the arrows and they don't, they don't look only 14 or whatever, 16% bigger, farther. Now, that particular house went through a lot of effort by the Planning Commission to try to get it to comply. And they, we even gave them a lift and uh, all kinds of things to get it in there. And it fit. Now, at the time, the biological assessment was different. Stream hasn't changed since then, but the main reason for the setback was you can't mess with butterflies. And, and that was considered a riparian habitat and a butterfly. The whole stream is considered a butterfly uh, reproductive zone or whatever they call it. And that got down to a thousand square feet. The guy still built it. There's a guy living in it now. It's fine. But that's the comparison because the, the three houses that are shown, the giant one and the two others with the pebble roofs on them, those are all prior to 2002. They're actually prior to, not the Coastal Act, but way prior to our requirements. Um, <clears throat> so we have to follow what the 2002 LIP says, not what something was built in you know, a long time ago, and it is by far not the majority of the road. Now, we've got one, two, three, four, five lots here, and we've had already had testimony that at least three are in, in plans. Uh, one of the speakers was talking about building his house. So this this limitation on cumulative effect is not CEQA exempt. It's it's CEQA required. So we need a stream study. We need a, an environmental study that includes those properties. Um, now, this is not just a little blue line. And you go out there and look, and there's a little creek down at the bottom. This drains miles and miles up in the hills. And when it comes down here, the reason why that gully is so deep is because massive amounts of water come through at one time. It drains way up to uh, Decker. And that you can walk through the drainage under the highway. It's no, it's not just this little piddly stream. Um, now, I would question the statement that there's zero impact from a, 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 a <clears throat> septic system on on the uh, protected zone of the ocean. The requirement is zero TMDL discharge. Zero. Okay, well, a little plant doesn't put out zero. It might put out one, and you may say that's nothing, but it's not zero. Now, I know we have an engineer saying it's zero, but you couldn't put that in your house and use it for drinking water. The, the code would not allow it. So it's not zero. That's another thing we have to consider. But I've known Don for a long time, and he does a great job. But he's an advocate for his applicants. So when you go through all these things and you say what what they are, you cannot just conveniently forget certain things. Um, one of them mainly is, oh, gee, we get 25% of the property to build on. What he forgot to tell you is he doesn't pick it. Okay? We do. If we decide that that house is too close to a stream or too far from a stream, et cetera, it's up to us to 
do the development placement area because it, it's, he doesn't get 25% on the stream with his fishing pole hanging over it. And he doesn't get 25% on the road with no setback. He gets 25% that works. And I'm not denying that he gets what, 1,700 square feet or whatever it is to develop. But this argument that is, oh, gee, we have that by right is absolutely not true. Okay, and it's and I'm not calling him a liar. It's truth. It's lack of truth by omission, uh, and that's what he's paid to do. Uh, now, to say there's no riparian habitat in a in a in a stream that's that long, with a butterfly reserve on it, habitat on it, that's riparian habitat. You don't just count what plant, you count what's going on. And that's why the Coastal Commission was so hot on that first house, was all over the fact that it's a butterfly reserve, or I don't know what you call it, it's where they breed. Um, so we, we have to look at that. And I want to remind you at the last meeting, uh, Pat Donegan said, when I asked what shall means, it means you must. It doesn't mean, oh, gee, we can ignore that because somebody told us, well, you really, it isn't there or, or the, this or that. Certain things we must do. One of them probably is this thing is, I don't see a pre-approval by the uh, streams of land or whatever it's called. And that's if a stream is on or near your property, if you're affecting it. Okay. Uh, so it's, now, when we get to the how how reliable the experts are, they can make mistakes. Whoever decided that there was zero to none chance that there were Shumash remains on that property or pottery, it took a citizen to Google it and find the story about taking six bodies out of there next door, you know, less than 100 feet away. That's a that's a burial ground. Uh, you know, it's the same thing as the clock tower building downtown. They found a burial ground. It took, took an extra year and a half to excavate it. Uh, this is this is something that an expert should have found. I'm not going to say he didn't know. Uh, it just should have, and it's now in the record. It's in the record that we have three lots being developed. That's now in the record because we just got told that by the people building the houses. So uh, I think what what is important here is we're trying to make the planning commission and the planning department more efficient. And when we have a situation where there's a super high probability that this is going to be appealed either way, a super high probability that we'll go to coastal either way and probably a reasonable prob probability it's going to come back to us that and the fact that there's certain findings that we cannot make when it says you shall and we can't make them because there's no evidence at all and that's why staff is recommending denial there's no reason not to Continue this again and, and have them come back with what they're supposed to have. We gave them a year to come back with an alternative analysis. And that alternative analysis is not somebody standing up and saying, well, gee, we thought about it and we like it this way. Uh, it's what are the effects of the alternative analysis? And if it costs, if it costs the applicant a couple months to do it right, and us a couple months to do it legally, it's not challengeable because we're making findings that aren't possible to make. Then we save how many hearings and how much staff time and how much applicant time if this house can be passed under obvious rules. There won't be appeals and there won't be lawsuits and there won't be this and that. And and this idea that if we just pass everything, 
it speeds things up and we ignore shells and things like that, um, we're, we're slowing the process down and, and, and we're not following the law. And, uh, and then people like, I guess his name was John spoke, uh, he'll have a clear idea how he can build his house because who knows gonna, who's going to be on the planning commission then when the planning commission approved the only house since 2002 under the new LIP, they set certain standards and that's the house at the top of the street. And they did it as well as they could because they didn't cut the guy down to where he, he didn't have use of his property. And they worked with him to use do certain designs that made it work, got rid of certain parking requirements, um, things like that. It works. People live there. It's not illegal. And it had totally different findings by different people, but under the same law. And so... When you start saying, well, gee, the average house in the neighborhood, the average house in the neighborhood isn't on the stream. It isn't. They aren't. They're totally different animals. Uh, some of them have bigger lots. Some of them have the same lots. But they have different setbacks, and they have different requirements. So when you look at this street, you've got three built and five, four to go. One, two, three, four, five to go three of which are coming right along, which means we need CEQA. Uh, I w I, I'm going to recommend when we get down to it, and I'm not quite done with all the little details, because what we had is two people speak for three minutes each, and then we have all these comment letters, these big, long comment letters that I hope everybody read. They have details in them that Coastal Commission will care about, and Fish and Game will care about, and the Indians will care about that we haven't even touched on. And and so uh, I think it's a mistake to just look the other way when we have three more coming that will go through the same process and we can save time for everybody if we do it correctly. Anyway, that's right for now. That's what I've got. Okay. Um, Commissioner Peek? You're muted. Yes, I'm muted. Um, <clears throat> so I had a uh, minor comment, not really related to anything that's been discussed yet, um, on slide uh, A50 or on that page. It shows the lights, I think, that are proposed for the site. Those fixtures are not at all in compliance with the dark sky ordinance. In fact, those are up and down lights. So for whatever it's worth, um, that ought to be corrected. And uh, that's kind of a simple note. I know that that can get corrected, so no concern with that. I, there may be some condition where the, the <clears throat> decks coming over those lights or something, and that's why they thought they could use them. But uh, I don't even think that there's a provision for an up and down light in the lighting ordinance. Um, in regards to the siting of the, of the house, um, just for the record, I did some repair work at the house that keeps getting referenced, um, uh, the first house on the right when you drive down West Sea Level. It's a very small house. It does function. Um, I think we were just replacing some switches or smoke detectors or something up there because the house sold recently. And I don't, you know, I, I think it, it's hard when we get like, and I understand the arguments that, that the, the neighbor has next door, although her house seems to be a lot larger footprint above ground and maybe a little bit closer to the stream. I think it's really important for us um, at this point to to set that precedent that kind of gives some clear goals for the other potential applicants on the street. And I think we ought to get a way to, to you know, cite that. I think that 
we should try to cite it as far away as we can from the stream that's feasibly, you know, possible. I think that the other thing that sort of, when you look at the impacts of what anything has on a stream, and yes, the properties in that disturbed ash, I very much understand that, but that's not to stop people from playing outside of the house. And when you talk about that, you know, distance, the closer that that home moves to the stream, the closer those impacts get. And I think that staff is very um, sort of intelligent and in, in pointing some of that stuff out. I know that, the, you know, an area of biological significance uh, is very important to this to this community and the runoff and all that. I, I'm comfortable with sort of like how the engineering of the system has been done. I think that John is a great good engineer my dogs are trying to attack the amazon delivery man hold on one second but uh i don't know i'm not I, i'm a little conflicted on you know if if i'm going to move to approve this absolutely want somebody on site um that can monitor any digging based on the testimony that there has been some burials in the nearby areas so um, I heard Don say that he's he's okay with that, I believe. So I would definitely make that as a condition. Um, obviously, they can't start construction until the road improvements are done. So I'm kind of, I don't have a, a big issue with the size of the house. I know that the basement's exempt if they weren't. I, I, I ask everybody like, you know, hey, if, if they weren't doing a basement, would be looking at this differently. Would be, be saying, there's no issue with the size. It's okay. We don't have a problem. You know, I mean, it seems like clearly then they could move it a little bit closer, but they have a right to build it. I mean, not a right. They, you know, have the ability to ask us if they can have their basement and for it to be a certain size. So that's obviously why they're before us. But uh, those are kind of my comments for now, Dennis. Thank you. Thank you. Um, okay. I'm, I'm going to start with the, with the, uh, so-called burial site. Um, as most of you know, I've done work in the larger tracks in my career, 3,500 acres, 3,200 acres, and 4,000 acres in, in basically the Temecula Valley. Our representatives were part of the Pachanga Indian Reservation. And on my project in Lake Elsinore, I had a true site and it was fenced and you couldn't come near it and I couldn't weed whack it, and I couldn't take care of it, but they did. So we had it fenced off. So if there was any kind of a burial site that was found years ago, as I believe Ms. Healy found or whoever found that article, they would have combed that area and fenced it off. And these people wouldn't have been able to do anything. So I've been through all this. I have found rocks. I found those things. I've called Pachanga when uh, Ms. Drummond says that the Chumash women said that everybody just tears everything up and does. That's not true. That's just not true. You've got to have somebody there anymore to take to make sure. Now, the three feet down, I think that's fair. I think, you know, maybe the most I would ever have thought that you should be able to go is like maybe five. But the Indians didn't dig 18 and 20 feet down at the time. They were maybe three feet. I don't know how far their ancestors they would bury them, maybe five feet. But I can tell you that if this was really what everybody is saying it is, it wouldn't be what it is right now. And maybe not even the people that live there right now from the lynches on down with the three houses would have ever had anything. So even though they got in earlier, and if you want to talk about a septic tank, you could talk about the three houses that are already there. The, the units that are going to go in on this house and the other four houses or lots, if it gets to that, are very efficient. Mr. Yaroslav should get in. Just, these, these people just don't do things. Their name is on the door. So they have to back all these things up when they say them. We as contractors, uh, Commissioner Peak and myself, we're guaranteed on a lot of things for a lot of years. Structurally, me, 10 years. So um, when people do the, when we have these experts come to us, there's a reason why there are experts, why there are consultants, is because their name is on it. And they have to take care of it for a long period of time to prove their point. So um, I, I was at this project. I, I looked at the stream. I could see that at one point, maybe the stream came up 14 or 16 inches. 
not much more than that. Uh, I could see where the grass had been flattened out over an area, but it was not, not rushed into as like I said with with Trancus behind me. So um, I, I I see a a house of seventeen hundred square feet. I see people that want to build something and they're not taking up a lot of room to do it. They're not affecting the creek at all or anything around them. They are in a spot that works and except for, I guess, a couple of the lighting issues that we can be fixed. Um, I'm not seeing what's wrong with this home. It gives them an opportunity to put something there, be a part of the community. We want people to be a part of our community. We want people to move here and, and be part of us. And the way to do that is when somebody's worked as long and as hard as these people have, and they have gone through all these other elements of design and whatnot, I'm sure they spent tens of thousands of dollars to get where they are right now. So to say that they haven't done anything and it's been a year and they came back, well, they didn't really have to. They've done what they need to do to make everything fit where it is. And to move it back five feet, I, I, you're not gaining anything there because our consultants have said, we're not impacting. Like I said, their name's on the door. So they have to do these things. And it's like with the biologist. I mean, I, I'm, I didn't see anything from Courtney here that said anything about there was a problem. I, I don't know. Did she write, uh, A.D. Fernandez, did she write something that says that all these things are a problem? Because I don't see it. And I see she's here, so I guess I could ask her. But I'll let you answer first. You can go ahead and ask her if, if you like. Um, we had a conversation about this project, uh, you know, last time this project uh, was before the commission. And at the time, I was asking her questions about it. And uh, we're talking about... Um, you know the 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 potential impacts of of you know moving at five feet. And again, we were only thinking five feet because that's what was uh, in the applicant's uh, letter. Uh, you know, so we don't know exactly if it could be moved more or less. Uh, we just don't have that information. So uh, at the time, we're talking about this house, um, and then we talked about the potential of four other houses. And so, um, based on our conversation, I, I quoted that in the staff report. Um, but again, she's here and we can ask her if, uh, if you like. Um, Courtney, I see you're here. And for Becca, there we go. Good evening. Good evening. So, I guess I'm asking is, is did you see a problem here with all this? I mean, was there, I, I didn't see a letter from you stating that, that we, we have to move the house because there's impacts. Um, is that, is that true? I mean, do, do you feel like that's an impact or you didn't give us anything? That seems a little odd to me that you wouldn't have chimed in on this like this, but uh, anyway, can you give us a quick update where you feel about where, where all this is, please? Sure. Yeah. Um, I wasn't asked to let, uh, write a letter. Um about this project, but um, Adrian is correct in um, what he stated that we had a conversation about it and he included my thoughts on the letter that he wrote and he um, and he quoted me and, and um, sent it to me prior to tonight's meeting. So um, with the information that was presented to me um, that the house could feasibly be moved back five feet, um, I do think that there are a lot of impacts that maybe people don't generally think of that um, five feet cumulatively could be uh, negatively impacting the stream. Um, so yeah, I, I, I do agree with what was written by Adrian and, um, and yeah. Okay. Can I ask you a quick question? Yes, go ahead. Um, Courtney, did you review the biological reports in the Coastal Commission comments on the house at the end of the little house at the end of the street that the city approved? No, sir. I have not reviewed that. Okay, thank you. Commissioner uh, Hill? Yeah, great. Um, three things. Archaeology. My dad was an archaeologist. I grew up with a lot of it uh, studying around here. Just to clarify something, you're not very likely to find much within the top three feet. You might have sometimes, but we're talking about 
10,000 years roughly, give or take, might be actually much longer, but sedimentary deposition happens over time. So more often than not, you're likely, to, in Malibu, you're likely to find things further down. So that, just to clarify that one point. Secondly, we're talking about this LIP ESHA buffer, ESHA protection law that is about protecting wildlife habitat. The nominal number we have here is 100 feet. It's not just about water quality to say, does it affect the water or does it not? It's about the habitat and, you know, gonna have raccoons and possum and deer or whatever are gonna be in that zone drinking or getting access to the beach or whatever they, they need to do. And so to say there's nothing going on there, the, the further we can pull it back, the, the more we improve that. And so my last comment would be that I think Ms. Lynch gave us a good phrase um, she was trying to make the point or making the point that the owners here, when they bought the place, they were well, well aware of the, the various limitations on the property, setbacks and so forth. And she, she said, knowing those limitations, the burden is self-created. I think that's a useful phrase in a lot of situations. And to me, where it resonates here now to say the burden is self-created or perpetuated insofar as we didn't get their comeback alternatives analysis and presentation. And, you know, usually our habit here is we find some pro problems with something and, you know, it's pretty close and we send them back and say, you know, if you can address this or that, and they make, you know, a 10% change to something somewhere in the project. And we say, great, you've got it. You got it within the code. You're close enough now. They, they just, they never made that move. So in, in a very, you know, real literal sense, they have perpetuated that burden that they created. That's all. Commissioner Jennings. Yeah. Um, so Courtney, did you uh, review the letter from Andrew Ford, the, the, his report and his estimate? Um, I have not reviewed that. It was not sent to me. Um, I can review it now. No. Um, let me ask you this. When you talk about the idea of possibly it being, um, there being an impact from moving the house five feet further away from the stream, um, let me ask you to consider this. They, the, the, the stream, if you're standing in front of the property, south is to your left, north is to your right. Um, and the stream generally goes from north to southwest. The house goes from north to southeast in a general sort of way. Um, so the closest portion of the house structure to the stream is at the northern edge of it, which is the garage and uh, parking area. And that area, I don't think anybody has any idea how that could be moved closer to the street. Um, so if that portion of the property, the northern portion of the property, the portion closest to the stream isn't going to be moved, under any scenario or any design plan, would that affect your thoughts about whether the impacts uh, would be at all significant from uh, uh, on the uh, from the setback to the stream? Um, if I understand it, I apologize. I'm more of a visual um, person, so I apologize. So I, I guess what you're saying is that. The portion of the house that is closest to the stream cannot be altered, or the portion of the house that's closest to the street cannot be altered. The portion of the house that's closest to the stream looks like it's pretty much fixed in position. Okay, but um, I guess um, not to disagree with you, but do we know that based on? I mean, just because we don't have a feasibility analysis, do we know that it? Do we know for a fact that it can't be altered at all? Has that well, been? I'm, I'm asking you to assume that. Oh, okay. Um, um, 
well, if I were to assume that, um, yeah, if if the if the portion of the house closest to the stream cannot be altered, I suppose impacts would be less than considerable. I mean, there's a lot of assumptions going on, so I, I don't really like making decisions based off of a lot of assumptions, but um, but I guess there it is. Second, a question on that. Courtney, you had stated earlier that there would be a cumulative impact if five houses went in there <clears throat> under those standards. Can I just, I would really appreciate a visual or, I mean, I, there's just a lot of ifs and assumptions that I'm going what? off of that I'm being asked to give, you know, definitive answers on. So. Yeah, well, I don't, I'm not asking you for a definitive answer because we don't have those, we won't have those plans for a while. Yeah, but but well, I know that you want to put in five Thank houses you. on that stream. <laughs> Uh, based on these setbacks, we will have a cumulative impact. Why, why don't you put the site plan up on the screen? Do we have a slide that has that? Well, you don't need to put do that. I mean, it's a question. Are five houses going to pre produce a cumulative impact on a stream with a what is it, twenty feet setback, or aren't John? They? John and and Jeff, if they have the potential to do that. What Jeff's asking is, gee, no harm, no foul. If we assume this or assume that, yeah, but he's asking. The, assume John, he's assume. asking a staff member a very specific question, and she's requesting to get the visual. So why don't we put the visual? Yeah, well, up we can do that. I want so that we can all be visual. on the same page, and that she can properly answer the question. Right, and I and while we're doing that, I I would like to consider that you take an expert and you give her. A specific question on the environment that didn't cover every question on the environment. Okay, a professional would look at everything. I would have looked at what we approved prior because it's the same stream and it's 300 feet away, but that's not me. I'm just saying we have, we're planning commission as we're putting this slide up, hopefully. Um, we shouldn't be doing stuff on the fly. The other day we did a coastal bluff by doing this. Well, it looks like this. Mm -hmm. And last week you apparently approved a landscaping plan that was never presented by going holding it in front of a screen. That's not the way you do things. Um, just in general, you plan by following the rules and making findings. And and you required as as our city attorney said, when it says shall, you shall. You don't say, ah, well, what's the difference? It's well, Commissioner, shall. Vice Chair Maza, hang on. I, I think part of the problem is, first of all, I don't know that Alex is bringing, gonna bring that up. And number I, two, I just need to know exactly what slide number we're talking about. I think it was two, that. it was the one we just had up. So uh, the that, one from Don Schmidt's presentation. Yeah. I was, I was sorry, I had my hand up. I, I just, I was just going to suggest to Alex if he could uh, pull up uh, exhibit or uh, slide three of my presentation that shows the, got, it. the uh, the the creek That's as well crazy. as the proposed development. So twice, twice, Courtney has said that she wasn't asked to look at this and she wasn't asked to do a couple things. So you're asking her to give you an answer, and unfortunately, staff didn't come to her. So right. that and, and if that is required. that in itself, that to me is is not good. However, um, I'm willing to still listen here, but uh, it's not anyway. good. But but the absence of it, if it's required for us to to pass this when it says shall, is something's missing. Well, that's you're talking about like with fishing game or whatever they're going to call themselves now. They you also heard Ad Fernandez tell you that. They told him, quit sending us that stuff. So that that's doesn't what matter. Did. It is required by it the does, But they don't Commission. want it. They it's told him, to quit sending it. Listen to it. Required by the Coastal Commission in a law that we adopted. Municipal code, okay? Whoever, whoever this other guy is, he has nothing to do with that law. It's not this slide. It's the slide that shows the whole, the whole river. Uh, it's that yeah, was Don's. Right? It was Don's. Dawn's second. number two. We just showed it about five. It was the last one we showed before this. 
And I'm not trying to criticize our staff or our consultants, but to, to say, gee, we should just rely on them 100% when we have one of them who said, no chance, there's, there you go. I'll talk about that later. So what was your question for then, Vice Chair? No, it was Jeff's question. She wanted to see it. Commissioner Jennings, do you want to re-ask her? Um, yeah, I, basically I was responding, Courtney, to your statement that you stayed just prior to the time I got to talking to you that, well, gee, if it could move, move, move back five feet, yeah, that would that would be something to consider. And I'm I'm asking you to uh, not because not because it's something that I'm asking you to approve or accept or anything else. I'm just saying, but if it turns out that the part of the house that's closest to the stream really can't functionally be moved closer to the road or further away from the stream, would that affect your statement? I guess it was that five feet. Yeah, that would, that would be something that would help. Well, if it can't be moved, I, you know, I, I don't review an, a feasibility analyses, but if it can't be moved and the planning department, you know, decides that the feasibility analysis is such that the house cannot be moved, you know, I, I'm, well, it, it, I'm not talking about the house and, and I apologize because I'm taking this sort of out of order. My questions are going to go back to Adrian because I, as I told him earlier, I need to talk about where he thinks these five feet are going to be possible. And it doesn't seem to me that the northernmost part of the property, the property where the garage is and so forth, really can be moved further further toward the, the street. And so I'm going to ask him where he thinks the five feet are going to come from. And I suspect he's going to tell me it's going to be down toward the south part of the property, uh, which is further the furthest part of the property that's already already the furthest part of the property away from the street. So that was the basis, and that's why, if I've confused you, I'm sorry about that. I should have asked those questions first, I guess, but I had you up, and so I was going to ask you about it. If you assume that this part of the house, the northern part of the house, the house that's closest to the, the part of the house that's closest to the stream, isn't going to be part of what can be moved, does it change your opinion? Because your opinion was that, that you know, five feet would be, would be, I don't know exactly what your term was, but whatever it was you said. Um, and, and so I'm, I'm just asking that question and you basically answered it. You said, well, if it can't be moved, it can't be moved. I, I assume that's, that's what you mean. I mean, I'm not asking you to make the determination of whether it can or can't be moved. I'm just asking you if it, if it makes a difference in, in terms of your analysis of the biological impacts. It, and 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 before I stop, let me go on further. We've talked about how you know there's lights and there's motion, and there's people, and so uh, you know I would think that the most impactful part would be the part that's actually closest to the stream. And I, I would like to add to that a little, Jeff, and that is, Courtney. Also, if there were five houses like that, would it be significant? Well, John, I, I I appreciate your question there, John, and it seems to me that that as we started off this this discussion, that that's a CEQA question, and that's your your argument that CEQA applies in this case, and and if it's determined the CEQA applies, then that's a whole different ball. Oh, no, I'm not talking about CEQA. I'm talking about biology here. But we're, you know, but fact, we're there already... could be five other houses. Does five feet make a difference? And that's something I would assume is imponderable. But and as a general question, like you're asking, what would a biologist think? It's a fair question. Okay. Jeff, Jeff, I don't know. How, I, I don't understand the if you assume that that part can't be moved because they haven't given us any alternatives analysis. So, you know, the option might be, well, put the garage on the south side of the property and you can shift things all around, and get 20 more feet or, I, you know, we don't know. We don't 
I don't know that we can make any assumptions about what can or can't be moved. Well, as long as you're there, let's ask Don Schmitz. He's got his hand up and he just opened it as a response to your statement. So yeah. let's ask Don. <laughs> Commissioners, uh, yes, we did give a very detailed analysis in regards to the wastewater system. I would point out that Mr. Yaroslavsky is in this hearing and can ask him. But in regards to the very specific question that is in front of you, the reason why the northerly portion of the house can't be moved closer to the street is because the garage is already within the absolute closest proximity to the dispersal field, which is eight feet. Remember, the dispersal field for this project blankets the entire easterly side of the property. We have to have the entire area for both the active and 100% reserve. And then when you look at the exhibit, which is up there where the house jinks out a little bit, uh, that's where the, uh, the tank and the UV and the chlorination dechlorination facility is. So we can't move the northerly portion at all because the garage has to be at grade and it can be no closer to, uh, to the uh, dispersal field that we have there. Um, and so to answer the even more specific question that Commissioner Hill raised earlier in the proceedings, uh, by eliminating a bedroom, we could maybe move it a foot. By eliminating the basement, which has been suggested, we could move it approximately five, six feet, uh, maybe seven feet, but that would all be on the southerly portion of the property be, of the house, excuse me, commissioners, because the basement on the northerly portion is already located uh, as far away as is necessary. So uh, that is the specifics on the uh, alternatives analysis, which we did provide to staff. And uh, Mr. Yaroslavsky, I think could be very uh, helpful in regards to deliberations if you call on him in regards to the wastewater system well, uh, design. I want to ask you a question. Yes, uh, sir. The reason why staff is saying denial is because some document your side provided said we can move it, okay? And so therefore an alternatives analysis is required because you said it could be done. So, why do you say it can't be done now? If you put, said in writing, it could be done. What we said in writing was that it was possible to move the house approximately five feet closer to the street. However, the line of questioning from Commissioner Jennings is actually very uh, spot on. The northerly portion of the house cannot be moved at all. Well, we, we don't have any evidence of that, and that's what yes, we're sir, we do. On. Yes, sir, we do. We provided a very detailed analysis by Mr. Yaroslavsky that was submitted to the staff. Well, why wasn't it submitted as part of your application? Because it was uh, required of us to do this analysis after the commission deliberated on this project before, and we right. did those investigations and then submitted it to staff. So there's a potential to move that southerly portion of the house uh, by the elimination of the basement five feet closer to the street, but not the northerly portion of the house. But the, the impossibility arguments are sort of belied by the house up at the north end of the street. I mean, it's just like, uh, yeah, we don't need to debate, uh, you know, with the applicant. We're debating with Commissioner Hill. Did you want me to have the applicant that? We're not debating? Okay. All right. He doesn't need an answer from me. That's fine. Okay. Um, Commissioner Peak. Um, it's uh what time is it now? It's late. I'll just tell you that much. We got a lot to do. So I would like to make a um I would like to make a motion to approve this project, which is going to go against staff's recommendation. Um, I just want to make sure that we have some indication that there's somebody's there to monitor to dig anything in regards to the basement or any of the excavation, septic, all that stuff on the site. Um, because I do think it's important in some of the uh testimony you have to have someone there. There's no doubt. You have to have someone there. Can yeah. I ask you a question, Skylar? Uh how are you going to make a finding that you shall 
or you must make this finding that you've done an alternatives analysis. That's a requirement of this, this resolution. And according to our city attorney, shall means you must. Now, how are you going to make a, how are you going to make that finding and have us vote for it if it isn't there? You know, let me let me ask, see if I can ask the question or answer the question by asking a question. This project is the same project that came before us two, what, a, a year ago, whenever it was, the first time it came before, when it was recommended for approval by staff. And at that time, was there no alternative analysis done? Wasn't it recommended for denial back then, too? No, it was originally recommended for approval, and then it came back to us and recommended for denial. And the then reason, it came, the reason but originally why, it was recommended for approval. The reason why they recommended it for denial, and Adrian will probably back this up, is that they said we could move it. That opened up the fact that there is an alternative, and when there is an alternative, we are required to make a finding that we studied that alternative. That's why. Uh, my my question is: When the project was originally proposed to us, was there an alternative analysis done? Director Malika, do you remember, or Ad Fernandez? Uh, do we remember? Um, the application was submitted in 05. So, um, chances are there was one. Um, the the alternative analysis probably submitted at the time is obviously uh, very old and does not include any of you know the 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 analysis that we would now require so you know there wasn't enough information at the time the setback uh, for the septic system to the the stream um uh, per the the building code um was only 50 feet not not um uh, the 100 foot that's required today so um so the analysis again would have i'm sure we can find it but i'm sure it wouldn't have discussed uh some of the issues that we're not discussing and uh as uh vice chair uh, masa mentioned are you know the the reason or the primary reason for our recommendation was the fact that Yes, there was a statement that the house could move. Um, that statement said, yes, you know, it, 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 it's possible that we could move this house. Um, and so we were, we've been asking for more information uh, uh, to basically um, um, confirm whether that would be the case or not. So are you trying to confirm both halves of the statement? Because the, this, the one half of the statement says, yes, it's possible to be, to be moved. And the second half of the statement is, but it would do no good. It would have no, no impact on the, on the resources. That is in the staff to, report. Huh? That's not it's in, it's in the staff report. Anyway, uh, if, if, uh, if Skyler wants to make his motion, I'll second it. But we're supposed yeah, to I'd like to make a motion. Hang, 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 on. hang on. I just want to be sure that we understand Commissioner Peak's motion. So, but yeah, so we... in regards to the alternative analysis, the way that I see it is that we're getting some evidence this evening, and it's not the full, you know, proposed alternative analysis, but we're getting plenty of evidence from both the the applicant. Uh, we got I think there was some reference to some of the stuff in regards to some of the engine engineers or the biologists that that while that project may be able to move, it's not going to, even if it moves, it's not going to have an impact as far as the, uh, as far as the water and septic goes with the riparian habitat. But right. Not, so it's not an alternative study, which is required. It's just somebody's opinion in a meeting. And and four point seven requires that we move it back to the maximum maximum extent feasible. And they've said there's a, there's a more feasible further extent. All right. And this is a shall. You shall. Let, let me. I'll be very then clear then in what the motion is, and I'll just say 
if if that's the condition, Patrick, do we have to meet that condition 100% on this? In terms of of, of in terms what of the alternative mean? analysis, the, the 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 language in the in, in the LIP says what it says. I can I can I can you know. I, there's no, no need for me to read to reiterate. Well, no, I don't. I don't. I don't want to be doing right. something that's not that's like completely out of line with that here. If that's what the language says that we have to do the alternative analysis, then we'll continue the hearing, do the alternative analysis, bring it back. And mine is a separate point. There's a different code section. And and, and so if the if, if if the planning commission this evening is is satisfied that the feasible alternative analysis has been demonstrated, that is that is what is required if not if you feel that that, that more is required and, and and you want a cleaner clearer picture that is entirely within your purview to to request that and 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 continue it that's really can i ask up you for, up for 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 you all, all right. to decide patrick what about and this is just a, a general question public notification there is nothing published that the public has seen at all for an alternatives analysis Nothing, zero. The, but the, and there's the, a, a requirement of public notice. Correct. I am. I am. I am confident that the public notice that went out regarding this project sufficiently notified the public of the project, of potential modifications to the project, and/or the planning commission, the planning commission's potential decision on the on the project. That is what re, that is what is required by public notice. Well, Scott, I, just what, wanna, what, I just what, want to remind everybody. What John, let me just have one one word in it. All right, the motion would have to be to direct staff to bring back a resolution approving the project. If you want to add whatever terms you want to add to that, you can do that. But it has to be a motion to bring to, to direct staff to bring back a resolution. Okay, and I, as I said before, I just want you to consider the fact that this is going on and it's going on a long ways, and if we shortcut it. For a month or two, you're not going to have this challenged, and it's a requirement, and it says shall. And Patrick's admitted that shall means must. Yeah, and on, and on it, when you go to court, when you go to court, you go to coastal, then you go to court, you come back, and we have to hear it two or three times more. You've you've done nobody no good, except spend a bunch of money. On, on its yeah. face, the motion is contrary to law. 4.7 says development in ESHA or ESHA buffer shall be limited, restricted, and or conditioned to minimize impacts to ESHA on and adjacent to the property to the maximum extent feasible. We've heard testimony that it could be set back further. So you, 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 yes, you have, Craig, but you've also heard testimony from the experts that it already has no impacts. On only the, only on with the, only res, with respect to water quality, not with well, respect to habitat, butterflies, raccoons, anything. And and we have we have heard testimony from experts that say there's no Indians. Okay, no you know no Indian but, stuff there. Don't but, bother but, with it. So you don't have to agree with it. I'm just saying that there is testimony that supports it. Okay, so here's here's where we are. To to me, we we've, we've got experts that told us there's no impacts about we, water we, that's all they told us is about water the, the deer and all the animals are still going to go through there it doesn't matter what where you are if you move the house five feet back they're still going to walk by number let me finish let me finish. let me finish so we've heard from all the experts that the applicant brought in i haven't heard one expert that the city brought in to tell us no because i'm not hearing it asked as not hearing it admitted no you need it we mr mr schmitz had to bring in a group of people what we have in front of us is ad fernandez and we have his opinion of this i haven't heard anybody else come through and i don't like to do this with staff normally but i in this particular moment i'm feeling like if the onus was on the city to bring people to tell us why they couldn't and they didn't do that the onus was on the applicant to bring alternatives who says we, we ordered him to? Oh, we did. Oh, our oh, last wow. motion was come back with alternatives. That's what we voted on. But that was not. It wasn't come back with an alternative no, uh, analysis. It was come back with a different project. 
No, I go read the resolution. Please. Come back with another solution and alternatives for us to look at. And we got. All right, well, I'm going to say this. I'm comfortable with approving this project the way that it sits right now, provided we get the um, <laughs> people in there to deal with the stuff in regards the to the, 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 the archaeological, archaeological stuff in place. And I, that's where I'm at. I, I, I've, I've heard the different discussion about the alternatives and stuff. I, I see the only benefit of that. I see us getting an alternative project that we're told is not feasible or, you know, is, it's already a really small house. I don't, I, I don't understand what the benefit in that is right now. So the that's benefit what is not to come back and, and you still be on the planning commission three years from now when you hear it again. That's the benefit. You wait too much, you get these things solved, you follow the law, and when people appeal, they don't win because you followed the well, law. Then if I'm wrong, John, then people won't second or support my motion. Well, and this is gonna go to <laughs> that's not true. This is gonna go to council and coastal and court at if 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 we approve what's what your your motion is. It's just it's it's a foregone conclusion. It'd be nice to say, let's get a a design here that fits a little bit better and the neighbors can live with and then everybody's happy. All right. So let's hold on a second. Can we get Don on the line? Or is Don there with his applicant? Andrew Ford has had his hand up for quite a while. There's a question of whether or not there was impact on uh, uh, on anything other than water. Let's take Mr. Ford real quick, Rebecca, if we could, please. Then we'll take Don. We're in the middle of a motion. Okay. <clears throat> I mean, we've already spent an hour, hour and a half on this. So we need to, we need to move forward. No, you, Skyler, you never need to move when it costs more time. No, we need to get it right, but I'm just saying we need to. Mr. Ford, are you there? Can you open? Um, I've asked Alex to unmute. There he is. You got me? Yeah, we yes. Do. Uh, yeah, Andrew Ford, consultant biologist. I just wanted to point out. Um, to clarify some things with regards to the Monarch site. It's an overwintering site and it's to the south of this subject, the subject property. Um, about two properties down. And the actual roost sites, I'm actually I'm looking at the California Natural Diversity Database right now, and it's cypress trees and eucalyptus trees. And there's a whole bunch of pine in there. Monarchs overwintering doesn't automatically make this riparian habitat. They also you know, overwintering up, upland habitats. Um, with regards to human intrusion and noise and things like that, Adrian's absolutely right. But given that distance right now, the five feet isn't going to prevent the intrusion. Um, move, moving the house five feet, you'd be better putting a, a fence at the back of the property and having that five feet to exclude that area rather than make that, that would achieve more um, because they're still going to use the backyard space. So I, it would be me even more feasible put a fence in to prevent them from getting into that area. Um, so, you know, um, and, that, and that's with regards to the Department of Fish and Wildlife, get, they, they only review projects when you actually have an impact. I and mean, it clearly states that on their website. That's why they keep telling the city of Malibu that they're not interested in reviewing these things because they don't have the nexus to do so. There is no impact, so they cannot review the project. I mean, you look on their website, it clearly states the four um, reasons why you would contact them for a stream bed alteration agreement and get them to review the project. They just wouldn't do that with this one. Uh, thanks, Mr. Talk? Ford. We can't have you just sort of Who's testifying again. We have to just respond to questions. Okay. Is uh, Don available? Don? Oh, where's his name? Up to the right hand corner. I, I, I see him here. I've clicked um, to request to be unmuted. Oh, man, was that exasperating? My, my cursor wasn't getting over to the unmute button. Can you hear me, guys? We yes. Can. I was yelling at the computer screen. It didn't make it any more effective. I'm sorry you had to go through that experience. <laughs> Um, so I just want to see that your client's going to 
as far as dealing with an alternative for this, you guys have always already been asked to do that. Once you came back with the same project based on the fact that you looked at doing other stuff and it looked like it wasn't feasible for you or for the client. So, um, I just want to be clear that if this goes in the realm of going back and getting a different alternative, that you're going to get a different alternative in a timely manner to the city. So we can, have your client get something approved on this side at some point or yes, not for that matter. Cause we haven't seen that alternative. Correct. Uh, and, and look, I just want to tell you uh, in the most heartfelt fashion that we have provided a lot of data in regards to alternatives. Did we design completely redesign a house with uh, architects and grading plans and stuff? No, but what we did do is I had Mr. Yaroslavsky and, and uh, Mr. Ford, uh, but most importantly, Mr. Yaroslavsky, show what we could and could not do as it pertains to redesigning the, the house. Uh, we thought that we were giving staff what they wanted in regards to an alternatives analysis, uh, Commissioner Peake, uh, outside of going through and spending, you know, many tens of thousands of dollars more on actually redesigning the project. So uh, we will do whatever is necessary, but we thought that we had done that and shown that that uh, any changes to the project would be extremely negligible and would have uh, no improvement uh, as it pertains to uh, not having the impacts on the repairing area, which by the way, uh, the biology analysis from Mr. Ford included not only water quality, but the repairing habitat and uh, all the biota, both animals and plants. Okay. Let me, let me, Scott, Thank let you, me Don. just uh, ask Don something. Yes, Don, sir. You've done a million of these. An alternative analysis is not designing a new house. It's an analysis on what could be done. And you can, yeah, and you come back and you say, I can't do this, I can't do this, I could do this. It doesn't mean you design a whole new house. Is that correct? I, yeah, I, I agree with you, Commissioner. And in fact, we did that. I sent in to Mr. Fernandez exactly what would happen should we eliminate a bedroom. I sent in to Mr. Fernandez what would happen should we eliminate the basement and where we could make those changes. We did send all that in, and, and it wasn't okay. just my firm's opinion. Hold on, John. Just hold on one second. It wasn't just my firm's opinion from a planning standpoint, but we sp where we spent the real money was on the hard science with Mr. Yaroslavsky and Mr. Ford. Okay, but what we're required to have is an alternatives analysis. If you already have all the data and you've already supposedly submitted it to the planning, uh, to the planning department, if we gave you a one-month extension, couldn't you put that on a piece of paper and call it an alternatives analysis? Rather than us than us going forward with a requirement by the Coastal Commission law that you have to, because that just means we're going to get a whole bunch of more hearings. And it's it's it seems to me, rather than delay you several years. That's the simplest solution, but I don't understand why everybody's opposed to it because there, I don't, I've don't. i never seen a case where there's a better chance of this being appealed. Look, I will do whatever is required, but before tonight, this is the first that I have heard from anybody that the alternatives analysis that we did was somehow inadequate. There's not exactly a... Um, a template in regards to these things. Oh, but there's we, nothing in our staff report that even has a paragraph heading. Oh, well, that's you can talk to your staff about that, that John. May be, but well, we you gave got it before we had everything that we everything that we submitted was just uh, included as an attachment to the back of the staff. All right. Report. So let me, Don. Thank you very much. Yes, sir. And I, I, I understand the frustration that you and your client may have with the opinion that you've provided that information, but we're saying, or a couple of our commissioners are saying, we don't have that information. It hasn't been clearly demonstrated to us. So what I will then say, and I don't, Jeff, if you would agree with me on this or not, is let's get that summary of what those alternatives would be, continue this hearing, get this back here. And if we can, uh, I guess it would be the end of May. I don't know if that 
or when that next meeting would be. Um, and we can move forward with the decision on this. Mr. Jones. doesn't want to second it, I will. Well, I mean, I, I just what, kind of with the caveat that like, I feel I'm comfortable that I've got enough information that in regards to the alternatives just through having this hearing. But if, if other people feel that we have not, then I want to make sure that that's out there and open. Well, well the, 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 I think the problem is that, that that what typically does happen when an when an alternative analysis is done, it's done essentially by staff in the staff report. At least that's the only thing I see. I don't think anybody actually, any applicant actually comes up and says, "Here's what we," you know, something with a heading that says alternative uh, analysis. They give you. You know, this is why we can't do this, and this is why we can't do that, and and I think that data has been presented, and I'm comfortable with it. Um, if you want to continue it, I, it breaks my heart to spend an, two and a half hours. What have we spent uh, on this thing, and then have it actually just have to be redone again? Um, I would I'll just say that look I, legally Patrick I'm like I'm comfortable with what I heard to make a decision and say I can approve this based on this but if I'm hearing from two commissioners that there's no way you can do that you know I'm not it's not a uh, not in the realm of like a scare tactic but I don't want to put anybody in a bad position and, and of course I would like to avoid things being appealed and everything else but you know uh, so, so, so the, the, the first thing of course would be it would be a direction to staff should this be the, the will of the commission to bring back a re resolution, at which point staff would attempt to codify and, and put on paper all of the direction, if that is the, the will of, of the commission, based off of the required findings. The staff report is staff's recommendation. It's their reading of the code. It's their understanding of the project. As I'm sure you guys are all aware, staff doesn't, you know, you guys are free to disagree with that. So legally, based off of what I have heard tonight, and then once again, with the caveat that we will bring back a, 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 a resolution addressing all of the re re required findings, no, it, 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 it's, it's, in, it's my opinion that it's not legally deficient. It wouldn't be a, I think I heard something, and if, and if I misquote someone, I, I apologize, wrong as a matter of law. No, I don't. I don't uh, believe that that's the case. So, are you, wait, wait, just to clear that, still I mean, that shall doesn't mean must. Or are you Come saying on, uh, you can do once again? No, nope, not at all. And and I I did want to say that when I answered that question, I want to say two meetings ago, I was very clear to say that's a rule of statutory interpretation outside of the application here. And 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 Vice Chairman and, and Commissioner, Hill, I I I hear what you're saying. I believe all commissioners understand it. To, to Staff, clarify, to clarify, because yeah, you basically said I'm wrong now. I said oh, I, I, is, I didn't mean that. I apologize. I just wanted to make sure that 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 we that, that uh, my name have, is not affixed to that. Yeah. We have data and representations on the table from the applicant that show that the project in front of us now is not to the maximum extent feasible, which is required. So it's they. We know they could they could push it back a little bit, so they need to do at least that. And and Patrick, my question would, would be: You're saying bring forward a resolution. Oh. We have to have a hearing on the new data, and that's not a resolution. If they bring back an alternatives analysis, we have to discuss it. And when no. you bring back a resolution, you bring back is no, yeah, the resolution yeah. what we wanted. But John. I can't I also said, make a motion to approve it right now and say I'm comfortable with what's been heard and we can you go can on. You can make that. I'm just saying if you do that, that's different than coming back with an alternative analysis. And as uh, Patrick yes, was okay. saying, Understand coming that. back with an alternative analysis uh, with a resolution, we can't discuss the alternative analysis. We have to discuss whether the resolution is what you put in it. And mm -hmm. we don't have a new hearing. And that's that's that correct. Still, that's correct. That is correct, and that still means that we never discuss an alternative analysis. And an approval well, now will set energy. them back years in appeals. Scotter, um, you have to. You you haven't been on the commission very long, but um, I would say probably eighty percent of the decisions that go against Craig and John are 
always apocalyptic and they're always going to result in appeals and wasted time and wasted money and all the rest of the stuff. That's the claim. Um, uh, well, we have I a, think a, a, a judge who's who's against this that lives next door. OK, you don't think it's going to be appealed? Don't think it's going to be appealed. OK, it, it, but but you always think that unless we agree with you, it's all going to be appealed and it's all going to be a disaster. Well, how many things do we get appealed? A, a lot, lot of them are appealed. Yeah, and and why is that? And if it weren't we if it weren't for the, motions, if it weren't for the fact that you guys routinely ex always oppose every project, it would be a lot easier to give greater weight to your arguments. Not but, always. But, I vote for a lot more projects than you vote no on. You probably vote no once a year. You're yeah, probably right. Dennis because... has voted no, no once in his whole career. Okay. Because so don't okay. say we're we're <laughs> gonna fight everything okay. you do. And I explain right, you. So let's let's go back to where where uh Commissioner Peak is. Commissioner Peak, do you want to change how you're feeling about this and go back to your original statement or what do you want to do? No, oh, I, I I'm comfortable that I have enough information to I would like to approve the, the project. All right. So I would like to and I know that I would like to go against staff's recommendation and make a motion to approve the project with the conditions in regards to the excavation. You know, I don't, I'm not making a, you can note my comment on the lighting, but the, the project has to be compliant. So right. that, they'll get that in the point. Commissioner but, but Scott, it, it still has to be a motion to direct staff to bring, to bring back, back a resolution. Yes, I got that. So I don't know if I have a second. And I, and I, I will second that motion. Okay, and I will make a motion to deny the project while I wait till Korea gets back. Don't don't we have to take well, a we, No, you make it. We do it all the time. Correct. No, so no, there can no, be a maximum of, of of three motions on the floor. As of right now, I count one. Okay. Okay. I'm going to make a motion to deny the project because it doesn't meet the finding on uh, having to do an alternatives analysis plus other findings. I'll second what, that. Is required by law. What version of Robert's rules is this, Patrick? Yeah, we do, we do this every meeting. What do you mean? You've done it many times. I've made a motion, yeah. and you. Robert's rule says if there's a motion on the table, you have to dispose of the motion. I mean, you oh, can no, do it by no. an amendment or a friendly amendment or whatever. But anyway, last, whatever. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go last, ahead. last meeting, this is exactly motion. Yeah, right. you can do a motion for a friendly amendment, a motion for an amendment, or a substitute motion. Absolutely. Right. Okay. okay. So we're going to go with the substitute motion gets voted on. First, and then you go back to the original one. Is that correct? Okay, Pat? let's vote. Okay, who's going first? Uh, Chair, Vice Chair Maza. Um, yeah, it's can, his his motion. Okay. Oh, actually, I, my understanding, and correct me if I'm mistaken, Patrick, wasn't the motion from Commissioner Peak and Commissioner Jennings made first, and was there a second to John's motion? Yes. There, 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 there was a, a second to John's motion yeah, by second. Commissioner Hill. Okay. And 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 it, that is the motion that we that, that I, I know it sounds paradoxical. And and Commissioner Jennings, I will I will send you a site. But yes, the motion we take first is is Vice Chair Mazza's and, and Commissioner Hill's substitute okay. motion. Yeah. A substitute motion. You are correct. Substitute motion. Okay. All right. <laughs> okay. Go ahead. Well, we're all learning things tonight. <laughs> Thank yes. you for the clarification. Um, Vice Chair Mazza. Yes. Commissioner Hill. Yes. Commissioner Jennings. No. Commissioner Peak. No. Chair Smith. No. Motion fails. Can we vote on the original motion now? Yes. Commissioner Peak. Yes. Sorry, I'm trying to keep up my motions up here. Commissioner Jennings? Yes. Commissioner Hill? No. Vice Chair Mazza? No. Chair Smith? Yes. Motion carries. Praise Jesus. Okay, so let's take a break. Yeah, um, we can contemplate listening to this two years from now. <clears throat> and you got to mute, right? Why is it you always make those comments? Because it sure sounds like you you instruct people to do these things. That's oh, a no, it's comment. true. It's true. And we Gentlemen, have hang on. probably we'll just... five or six appeals this year. Come on, gentlemen. Because we, we... of you. Gentlemen, this hey. is camera, camera and, uh, and, and well, uh, audio, please. Uh, 
prior to that, could I ask how long our recess is going to be? Oh, seven minutes. All right, thank you.
What, which item is next, Dennis? Uh, 5C, the uh, Malibu Road, 22936. One, two, three, four, five. Three, four, five. A senior planner, an attorney, a director. I think we got it. Okay. And Rebecca, oh, Rebecca, she's so important. We can't, I can't, can't just take off without her. I'm probably still on Norway time. <laughs> well, you're not completely wrong about that. It does feel like I should be sound asleep at the moment. But I am back in the meeting. I'm so sorry for the delay. And and the sun's not out. Um, <laughs> okay. Here we go. Close. Oh, hang on. Very important. Closely development permit number 21-009 and demolition permit number 22-015. An application for an interior and exterior remodel, addition to an existing beachfront single family residence and other associated development. We have senior planner Bobbitt on this case. Yes. Uh, oh, yours. Okay, thank you. Uh, good evening, Chair Smith, and happy birthday. Thank um, you. Members of the Planning Commission, um, this project was originally continued from the October 17th, 2022 Planning Commission meeting due to concerns regarding compliance with the city's remodel policy. The project was continued to a date uncertain and the project team worked with their structural engineer to provide a detailed response to comments and correspondence submitted by both members of the public as well as members of the planning commission. Next slide, please. Uh, pictured here is a vicinity map and aerial photograph of the project site and the surrounding area. The project site is uh, located on the ocean side of Malibu Road and is indicated by that red star on the aerial photograph. Next slide, please. Um, below, we have the project description of an interior and exterior remodel of an existing 4,944 square foot, two-story single family residence. And I wanted to make note that um, Commissioner Hill did reach out to staff and I apologize, I did not have a chance to respond to you. I was having some uh, IT issues today, trying to access on base and permit history. Um, I did find that later in the day, and um, I wanted to note that this number, 4,944 square feet of the existing residence, um, was a combination of the permit that was issued in 1985 
um, that allowed 4,247 square feet, um, adding the garage and guest unit, um, which actually came out to a larger number of 5,023. However, when the architect did the measurements, he took this more conservative approach, um, totaling the house at 4,944 square feet. Um, continuing on with the project description, um, the project proposes an addition of 2,217 2, square feet to the existing residence, open air trellises, ground floor and second floor decks, view permeable fencing, 126 cubic yards of non-exempt grading, a new septic system, and including a demolition permit number 22-115, for the demolition of exterior walls, totaling in 33.5%. Next slide, please. Pictured here is the site plan. Um, the area in blue shows the proposed additions. Next slide, please. Now this is a little bit small, but pictured here is the proposed demolition for the existing residence. The project proposes a total of 33.5% demolition of exterior walls. One issue that was raised at the previous planning commission hearing last October was the issue of one of the exterior walls becoming an interior wall. The city's remodel policy states, and I quote, exterior walls that become interior walls shall be counted against the 50% threshold unless the interior wall remains load bearing or is otherwise determined by the planning director. The structural engineer has demonstrated that the exterior walls that which become interior walls remain load bearing, and that is included in the structural analysis and the attachment to the staff report. The project was reviewed for compliance with the remodel policy by both the planning department and the building official. Next slide, please. Pictured here is the first floor plan which includes an addition of 1,142 square feet. The project applicant removed a portion of the first floor addition that was a point of contention at the last hearing, and that is bubbled out in blue um, and on the ocean side of the residence. Next slide, please. Here's the second floor plan, which includes a 1,075 square foot portion of the second floor. And that um, addition that was also point of contention was also removed on the second floor. Next slide, please. Here are the uh, proposed elevations for the residents. Um, the direction of the elevations are uh, outlined here in yellow. The proposed addition does not exceed 24 feet and the roof measures 23 feet 11 inches, which is in a reduction in height from the previously existing residents. Next slide, please. Here, pictured here are both the south and the east elevations of the proposed residence, inclusive of the additions. Next slide, please. Here are the story poll photographs. Um, staff redocumented the story polls on March 20th of 2023. So these are updated photographs, and the updated photos were also included as an attachment to your staff report. Next slide, please. In summary, the, pro the proposed project meets city codes and standards, and staff recommends adopting resolution 2231, approving coastal development permit number 21009. Planning staff, the building official, and the applicant team are available for any questions. Thank you. Wonderful, thank you. Um, disclosures, Vice Chair Maza. Yes. Uh... I I did not go on the site. I drove by. I walked the beach. Um, <clears throat> I have one other here I got to look up. Uh, I just got a text from, hang on a second, Jose Kozuzian uh, stating, please do the right thing and vote for Vote yes on Mike's project. He's entitled to a remodel. Thanks, ma'am. Um, that's it. Vice Chair or uh, Commissioner Jennings, you're muted. 
<coughs> Nothing <coughs> since the last hearing. <coughs> Commissioner Peak. Uh, I received the same text as John Maza, and I met with the applicant uh, at the site. Uh, not this, not this weekend. This a weekend, whatever a weekend a day ago um, at the project. And I would say that the only thing that I learned really about that, other than reviewing the project as we just did right now in the staff hearing, is the two. There are palm trees right now that are out in front of the site. Um, that those clearly block the view corridor. <laughs> and uh, so I'll have some comments on those later. Commissioner Hill. Yeah, I think they said they would remove those. Sorry, I, I, I was coughing a lot. I thought I was muted. Um, uh, yes, yeah, Jessica mentioned, I, I did look in on base because there was some concern about the square footage. So I thought I'd look at past permits and see if I could figure that out. Um, and while I was in on pace, I also found no building permit for the deck. And there is a planning approval for in 2014 for more rocks, which happens to show the deck as existing. Nor did I find any separate permit for guest unit so I, I I will want some further clarification about those square footage numbers, which we can go over. Um, and also, I got a call from Howard Rudsky urging me to approve the project on the basis that if and only if we would pass this project, the owner on whose behalf he was calling would use his money and influence to achieve a particular local political goal that I might agree with. And I told him that the owner's political views have nothing to do with the merits of the application, and I would not and will not consider them one way or the other. And I just think that's, uh, you know, trying to influence a commissioner to vote in a certain way based on ulterior political concerns is is unconscionable. And I don't want to see or hear that. Those are my uh, disclosures. Um, <coughs> met with them the last time it came before us, so um, we're ready to go. Um, uh, Mr. Chairman, go ahead. Can I ask uh, both of you who are contractors whether or not you'll bid on this project? So, Vice Chair Maza, I've been here a little over almost two years and four months or three months. And this position is such an honor to me that I would never be so ridiculously stupid to do something like that. And I haven't done it since I've been here. I'm insulted that you would ask me a question like that. Don't ever do that again. I've You're never done that. I'm not question. gonna do anything like that. Don't ask me something like that again. Okay, we'll have the city attorney ask you. Mm -hmm. Okay, who would have got? We got, um, Jessica's gone. Jesus, John. Um, if you'd like to open the- Open the public, public hearing, please. Thank you. Um, and so for the applicant team this evening, we have Mike Amar and Hani Amar, who are the owners, Garrett Mills, Arshad Arzarnoush, Fred Gaines, and I am Cecita Samini with her hand up in the meeting. I'm not clear on whether she is a part of the applicant team, so perhaps uh, Mike Amar could let us know whether that is the case or not. I don't believe it is, in which case she'll be called later in the meeting. He um, is on the Malibu uh, Motel project. Okay. Um, so if you could unmute for uh, Mike Amar. And Mike, if you're present in the meeting under another name, if you could click the raise hand button at the bottom of your screen for Alex to spot you in the meeting. Uh, okay. Um, and if you are present in the meeting and calling in from a cell phone, 
you would raise your hand in the meeting by clicking uh, or pressing star nine. If not, if we could move to Farshad Azarnish. Rebecca, let me try the applicant and see. Yeah, Farshad. Uh, and Farshad would be present under Atelier. Under Atelier, <laughs> I can't say anything right tonight. Uh, architects. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Hi. Uh, hi. This is this is Mike Amar. I, I'm I'm here with Farshad. That's why you couldn't see me. I apologize. Okay. Can you hear me? Okay. Yes. Um, good evening, um, commissioners. Um, thank you for looking at the project. Um, when we purchased this property about six years ago, um, our plan was to renovate and to move into this property as our main residence. And that continues to be our plan. And um, our team assures me that we are 100% compliant with all the codes and all the requirements. So thank you for looking at it. And that's all I, I uh, want to preserve the rest of my time for uh, rebuttal. Thank you. Who, who are, do we have for shot? Is that who we're going to have or Garrett or who we got? Mr. Gaines. I apologize. I, I was muted. Um, I'm talking to myself. Hanya Amar is the next person in their sequence. Okay. Good evening. Good, Good evening. evening. I'm Hanya Amar, and uh, my husband and I purchased this house in 2017, like he said, um, in the hopes of making it our home for years to come with our grown children. I hope that we will get your approval and support to get it to be that home for us, and so, so we can be part of the Malibu community. Uh, we, we, we hope to be uh, good neighbors and uh, good community members, and I hope that we will get your support and uh, approval. Have a great evening, thank and thank you. you so much for your service. The next speaker will be Garrett Mills. Yes, good evening, commissioners. Uh, thank you for this opportunity. I'm Garrett Mills, I'm a structural engineer, and I'm the structural engineer for this project. Uh, I'm a principal at Taylor and Siphon Engineers. We've done many, many projects in the city of Malibu, and many of those have fallen under the remodel constraints of the LCP policy. I fully reviewed that policy in regards to this project and fully, fully reviewed the project. I've prepared a schematic design that follows the policy. Uh, I've also visited the house. I sent staff underneath the house to look at existing conditions of foundations. Uh, the existing foundations are robust. It's a grade beam and pile system. We we're proposing no changes to the foundation system. I have fully reviewed the plans and uh, we, myself as the structural engineer, uh, we know that we can follow this plan and we welcome the city building and safety department's review of our project. And we welcome inspections during construction to make sure that we have followed the policy. Thank you. I will reserve the rest of my time. Thank you. And if you could open for Farshad Azarnish. I believe he would be under Atelier Architects as well. Yes. Uh, good evening. Thank you, commissioners. I will be very brief, and then I will reserve the rest of my time for rebuttal if need be. Um, just while I'm uh, going to give you a history, if you can put up the slide number one, please. That's not... It may take a moment for our technical staff to load the PowerPoint. 
uh, this, uh, addition, this is an additional remodel for an existing two-story single family dwelling and garage and guest suite in compliance with policy, uh, LCP policy number three. Uh, the original submitter was beginning of 2021. The last commission hearing was in October of 2022. The project was continued uh, based on um, uh, planning commissioner's request that the building, the building official confirms that we are in compliance with policy three, 50% maximum demolition. Since then, we have revised uh, the plans, eliminated the two-story addition at the rear of the rear and side of the house towards the ocean. Uh, and that was to reduce the percentage of demolished wall further and also address Commissioner Hill's, Hill's uh, comment about view corridor, even though the view corridor as it is existing today is what is, and we have not had not reduced it but now we've increased it in the back of the house. Still, the, the front remains at what it is existing. And by making the revision, we reduce the square footage, the percentage, and hoped to help with the view corridor, do what we can with the view corridor. So this chart that you see, I'm going to go briefly over these. The chart on the left is what was submitted originally, and we were at 33%. And the chart on the right side, even though we eliminated, well, we are at 33.5%. I'm so sorry. On the left, in the previous hearing, we were at 36%. If you look at the number, number at the bottom, it says G total, and then says 36%. That's the average, not the average. Total demolished exterior wall over the total exterior wall existing today. Today, we are at 33.5% based on policy three. Uh, next slide, please. So if you notice uh, the area that is uh, clouded with blue uh, on, the, on the floor plans or the area of the addition that we removed, and planning department asked us to include on the first floor to include all the interior, let me rephrase that, based on planner, planning department, we included all the exterior wall that became interior, interior in our calculation on the first floor. Next, please. And this is basically sh uh, showing uh, what walls were included in the 50% uh, demolition. That is consistent with that chart on the left. Next, please. And this is a summary of it. It's, it's as you see here, we really added a lot to, uh, based on planning department request, um, included the more walls, exterior walls in the in the calculation. Next, please. Next. And um, next. Next. Okay, this uh, relates to the view corridor. The red line, what is what the view corridor would be or was in the previous submittal. And by eliminating that addition in the rear side of the property, we widened the view corridor in the rear of the property. Uh, still, the front is front because we are not adding anything to the front. So that, that remains. Next, please. Okay, so I want to stop here and go on. And in, in the process, we've met with the planning 
department and building official and have gone through all these cal calculations and they are they have confirmed that we do in fact comply with all the requirements of policy three uh, commissioner to commissioner hills uh re request or rather than request comment uh in addition to eliminating the addition in the bank, we have, based on planning department's request, we have the, the existing side yard gate is a solid gate right now with two or three trees in front of it. So there is today there is no line of sight to the ocean. And based on planning department's direction, we made the side gates, both of them, view permeable. And if the planning commission uh, wishes or directs us to do so, the owner is willing to um, either trim or remove the trees that are blocking uh, the view to the ocean. That's on the table. If you require that, we'll do, we'll comply gladly. Uh, so, and uh, we meanwhile, we uh, try to reach out to the neighbors, uh, but uh, to see what we can do and how we can deal with their concerns and have not been able to connect. I reserve the rest of my time for rebuttal. Anything else? Thank you. Thank you, Farshad. And um, you still have uh, six minutes and 14 seconds remaining for rebuttal. Um, did you want to have Fred Gaines speak as well? Ms. Fred Gaines, we'll uh, hold on to the remaining time for rebuttal. Thank you Thank so you much. Thank you very much for the clarification. Then our next speaker is Sina Samini, followed by Howard Redsky. There we go. Hello, this is Sina Samimi. I represent the neighboring property owners, David and Linda Shaheen. And my client, first of all, I just want to make this clear. We're not trying to block the remodel. Uh, my client has serious concerns about the impacts to his own home. And also there's serious implications on how this 50% rule is being interpreted and LCP policy Number three is being interpreted that could have far reaching implications for all projects throughout Malibu. Um, we heard Jessica read from LCP. So if this loophole is allowed to be approved, that could have some serious implications here. Now we haven't had enough time to hire uh, a structural engineer to be able to address this issue head on and do the technical analysis of whether or not uh, this particular project hits the 50% rule or not. Uh, so we're actually just asking for this to be extended so we can do that analysis. And we think that would be helpful for the planning commission uh, to have that analysis before it, before it makes this decision that can have such uh, far reaching implications. Uh, we've also submitted a comment letter. Uh, maybe you've had a chance to review it, but there's other issues that we've raised that have not been addressed previously, uh, such as the spa. Uh, there's some issues with the septic system and some additional load there. Uh, so those have all been addressed in our in our letter, but our main concern is that we want to be able to address this 50% rule issue um, because it does affect the view corridors uh, because this is a non-conforming property. Uh, so if it does exceed the 50% rule, it has to come into conformance, and that would add a significant number of feet to the existing view corridors. Either on both sides, it would have to be eight feet or it would have to be 11 feet total if they wanted to do it on one side. So that's how it has the direct impact on my client because those view corridors would be directly adjacent to his home. And uh, to the extent that it's brought into conformance, then it would add a significant amount to the view corridor. So we're asking for a continuance here. Uh, thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Our next speaker is Howard Gretzky. If anyone else is present in the meeting and wishes to speak on this item, 
please click the raise hand button while Howard is speaking. Go ahead, Mr. Rodsky. Howard uh, Rudsky, please. Hmm. I saw him in the meeting a second ago. Um, perhaps unmute for Atea Architects. I don't know if they have additional information, but their hand is up. Uh, what is customary? Should I reply, respond to the comment made by? Um, I see. No, um, you'll come do all of your rebuttal at once after the close of public Thank comment. Thank you. Um, no, Mr. Radsky. I, yeah, he, he was literally in the meeting a second ago and okay. I think he has, is not currently here. Um, in which case seeing no other hands, we, well, well got, actually now I've got on. three hands. Let's see. Okay. I'm having trouble seeing them all. Okay, so I believe our next speaker then would be Joe Drummond. And if you'll give me just a moment, Joe, I'll create a speaker identity for you. And uh, we would be ready for Joe Drummond. I won't be that long. Okay. Um, ready? I just wondered with... Uh... The view corridors that he's talking about, isn't it anything over 18 feet is not supposed to be blocking anyone's view? That's what I'm just, that's my question, basically. So I don't know. I think it is over 18 feet, I'm sure, but thanks. Thank you, Ms. Drummond. Um, so with that, we'll return to Farshad under RTA Architects for rebuttal. So uh, a couple of points quickly. Uh, Jessica will say that, well, I'm sure that the 18 feet has nothing to do with the view corridor. It's a different application. Uh, it doesn't have to do anything with view corridor. In reference to uh, the opposition um, statement, they've had six months to hire anyone they wanted to hire, and they didn't do that. We reached out to them wanting to sit down with their experts and see what we can do. Nothing happened. For them to put to come in at 328 Friday night and then ask for continuous, it's not really right. Um, point by point, we did not put a wall inside the exterior wall. That's not the case. That's just misunderstanding that they have or misrepresentation, one or the other. There is no other way to improve that. The spa is above the flood zone elevation of 17. Uh, Lauren, uh, I'm sorry, Lauren uh, the Coastal Development has reviewed the spa, has approved it. And when the question came up prior to the last hearing, Jessica, Ms. Thompson, or Ms. Bobbitt, I'm sorry, reached out to Lauren, and Lauren reconfirmed, and I have the email, I'm sure Ms. Bobbitt has the email confirming that, that the SPA has no issue. And I have not seen any reference in the opposition letter to the septic, so I'm at a loss what they're talking about. And 
and view corridor that they're talking about, we are not reducing the existing view corridor. We are not reducing or changing it at all. And the view corridor is not, by the way, designed for the neighbor's benefit. View corridor is designed for the vehicles and people walking on the street. One more point to, I wasn't, I wasn't sure that he was going to do that. Can we push up, please? Um, my, uh, uh, what it says, scenario two, it is page number, page number. Scenario two, uh, Commissioner Meza, in this scenario, we assumed for a moment what you interpret the policy three or what you say it should be. Uh, we assume that's for a moment, that's the rule of law. Even when we do this and we include everything, every exterior wall that becomes interior, we are still at 44.3%. The only issue is that we cannot, we could not have included this in our package because this is not in following exact ruling of policy three. But if we were to do that, we would be at 44.3. Next slide, please. Uh, uh, Commissioner Meza, please take a look at this. Take a look at this, how we've included every single exterior wall that has been demolished or has become interior, regardless of whether it remains loading or not in that calculation. And that is, we are still at 44.3. Again, at the cost of being redundant, we could not have included this in the submittal because this is not the rule of law that we, it's on the book. And I, I just work here. And I, so even if we were to do that, I know I'm being redundant. I apologize for that. Today, there's no view corridor. And, and uh, uh, so this clearly addresses uh, Commissioner Major's uh, cons uh, concern. And uh, the uh, owner is saying, and he's correct, there is no view corridor today. And we are willing to improve the situation by making, making the gates view permeable and removing the trees if the commission directs us to do so. Thank you. Thank you. And that concludes uh, public comment for this item. Can Chair Hill? I'm sorry, I'm doing it now. Chair Smith. I think you're muted, Dennis. Dennis, you're muted. <coughs> muted? Am I unmuted now? Yeah. Now we can hear you. Okay. Um, Commissioner Hill has his hand up. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I have a number of just questions, clarifications, technical things. Um, and I guess for lack of a better place to start, there's been reference to the view corridor. Let us all please turn to sheet A101 while on the screen, it would be nice to see um, the applicants exhibit showing uh, the how they have changed the view corridor. They showed sort of two lines of sight running down the view corridor. Is that uh, Jessica or Alex, or do you remember what slide that was? What I'd like to do is compare the exhibit they made. Yeah, there you go, perfect. Now, so, and, and maybe this is mainly for Skylar. My, my concern at the, at the time was that the view corridor is not necessarily a linear line of sight that when somebody looks through it, you may be looking through it from say the, the right side and looking diagonally to the left side. So there's a there's a view on an angle. And what what they have done with their example here is in pulling back the front portion closest to the beach, I guess front is amb is ambiguous in this case, but the side closest to the beach, um they show that they've they have allowed a little bit more view when you make that diagonal line of sight. That 
contrasts, however, with the sheet A101, for example, or really any of the plan views, where the new second story addition, the kitchen section on the first floor, and uh, corresponding to a niche section on the second floor, protrudes out far enough into the, the path there that there is virtually no improvement in the view quarter and how they've set it back. And they don't show on their exhibit here on the screen, you don't see the kitchen portion protruding out that you do see on sheet A101 in the purple area or... Uh, that's that's the fire access, so that's five feet, right? Is that what you're after here? No, no I'm not about the fire access. I'm just saying to look at the mass of the building and what, maybe the plan view for, okay, A400 is a good example. Um, I, I pulled out A101 because I had a different point I wanted to make on that, and I didn't want you to all be having to flip through the whole booklet. But on A400, you can see on the first floor plan, the pink area, uh, the kitchen sticks out pretty far still. And so having their, their valiant effort to pull back the portion closer to the beach doesn't really achieve anything or not much, maybe a few inches, uh, but I, I laid a straight edge on it and, it, and it, it didn't really seem to help. So that that isn't so much a question as just an observation. I, let me go ahead with my questions. Um, on sheet A101, we have the dispersal field immediately adjacent to the Malibu roadbed itself. Are we all looking at A101 now? Anybody not? I don't want to leave anybody behind. Um, and uh, typically, when you have a paved road, you have a, an easement that's substantially wider than the paved portion of the road. So my question is, how is that dispersal field interacting with the easement on the road? And you know, they're very likely utility easements that run under that side of the road there. Um, and it seems like, I could be wrong, but it looks like they're showing the dispersal field is projecting into the road easement and potentially conflicting with uh, utility easements. Okay. Maybe that's a question for Jessica. Or or I guess, uh, is Richard, Richard's not here. Is Richard here? I can answer that one. Uh, let me take a look at the survey to, to check the easement. Hold on. First of all, the water's on the other side of the street. So there's okay. nothing on this side of the street except for overhead power lines. Okay. And if Public Works took a look at this, because this is where this goes, they would have come across and said, you're in our easement, you need to back off. So that that obviously is not the case here. This is in their, in their drive area. So, which is what's already there. There's nothing, there's nothing under the ground there. That sounds plausible, but not necessarily dispositive. I mean, it just seems weird that the dispersal area would go right up to the edge of the paved road. Okay, so? So um, these are questions. So, uh, you know, um, Jessica, okay, I guess Jessica's looking that up. <laughs> so, um, so I think I can ask something else that doesn't necessarily require her. Um, all right, this is, this is a question that, that, uh, Commissioner, uh, Chair Smith and, and others may weigh in on regarding the changing of tops of walls. It seems to me when you're changing the height of the top of the wall, either you have to remove the top plate to alter the height of the cripples and then put a new top plate on, or, and I think this is what they're doing here. If I recall, they're leaving the top plates in place, right? And then they're just they're adding new cripples and new structure above that. In which case, it's no longer the top plate, so they've added a, a new top plate in effect. So it's kind of an existential question. The top plate is no longer the top plate because there's a different top plate. But I don't know how that affects what you count as a new wall or not. Didn't didn't they demonstrate that even if you're counting that entire space, that they're still under the 
Well, but it, I don't think that that demonstration necessarily took into account that the second story walls that would be heightened added to a new height. And I think historically we say the height doesn't matter, but we also say if you're changing the top plate, that's a new wall. And so it just struck me that if you're adding on top of the top plate, it's no longer the top plate. So maybe it's a new wall. I understand what you're saying, but I think yeah. the staff looked at this very, very closely to come up with their numbers. On yeah. That. So yeah. Correct. All right. Well, that, okay. Is that a is that a question you want the building official to answer because she is in our meeting? I'll just oh, leave. Hey, it I just want to add add to you uh, policy three, number um, number one, A one C discusses that and it says increasing or decreasing the height of the exterior wall or altering the roof line unless it can be demonstrated that no structural alterations are made the proposed or proposed required no, the removal of the frame material uh, is, is counted in 50%. And that's one of the things that wasn't counted in the analysis that the architect did. If you notice the the elevations of the building, which are shown on uh, this building is a pointy building. Okay, it's going from a, on A two hundred. They show the elevations, and it's in, on the front page of all your plans. You see, it's a square building now, flat roof instead of pointed roof. So they have filled in the downslope and upslope of all those pointies. And that makes them countable uh, according to that policy. Those, those are called ridges, Vice Chair. The ridges. When you fill in a ridge and make it flat, you have to consider that you've added material to the wall. And therefore, under that provision, it counts as removed. It's uh, A1. C. And that's that's a question I was going to ask because that wasn't counted in the red lines. You can see on the front page of your staff or your plans you got that the front of the building square, flat roof, back of the building square, flat roof. But the elevations as it exist, exists now are ridge lines. And when you fill in a ridge line to make it flat, I get it. Yeah. Okay. So there's that, that concern. Uh, this may just be a clerical thing, but also on A400, um, the legend shows uh, existing walls to remain, and it shows new walls. Mm -hmm. And when you look over at the first floor plan and the second floor plan, there's a whole section of new walls within the pink area, like around the kitchen and so forth that are marked on here as existing walls to remain. They obviously don't exist already. So that may just be a clerical thing, but it also may be um, feeding some of the mathematical uncertainty that I think we're still feeling here. Um, let's see, moving on. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, several of the building permits in in the past are have been repairs to the rock revetment um the most recent one was 2018 using manufactured rocks and i, I i'm not sure but it's i thought that most or all seawalls in malibu are restricted from being able to be uh repaired or rebuilt um and i don't know how that interacts with the com the Coastal Commission having accepted an offer to dedicate a lateral easement on the property. Um, if if they have that lateral easement dedication, was it uh, legal or proper to be building and repairing and extending the rock revetment materials? What, what's that got to do with the house? I was just wondering. They're They're planning on uh messing with the rock revetment again yeah 
Um, okay, and then I guess let's go to my my point of I'm I'm starting to to fade here some with my with the pneumonia, but um, on the square footage thing, uh, Jessica may have explained things by mentioning there the discrepancy in the numbers we came up with has to do with the guest unit. And that sounds plausible, except that I came across no permit in on base for a, no separate permit for a guest unit. And so what I came out was, depending when you add up the permits over time, it was either 4,504 4, or 4,161, uh, the latter lower number being the, the revised number, and that that's incorporating a 230 foot square foot addition in 1989. Um, and so it, it looks like we're approximately 400 square feet short of, of any permits in the file to be adding up to the 49, 44 square feet, which is significant because if, 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 it, if it is more like 4,500 square feet, then they would be beyond the 150% number or the 50% rule. Um, so what, what, I guess the question is, what, where did the guest unit come from and is there a permit that, did I miss it somehow? Well, I think the architect um, can best speak to that, but let me see if I can pull it up as well. I think I found it in the file. But if we want to unmute Farshad. Um, yeah, that could help. He should be able to explain that a little bit. He ran the numbers a couple of different ways as well, so I will let him speak to that. So I am back. A couple of... Uh, uh, Comments, Mr. Commissioner Mazo, policy three says that if you increase, it, it, it clearly says increasing, decreasing the height of an exterior wall or alter the roof line, unless it can be demonstrated, you did not, I don't know whether you missed the word unless or not, meaning if it can be demonstrated that the existing walls are not going to be revised or modified, then it doesn't count. If you please read that particular uh, uh, word with the word unless, the unless exempted. The Commissioner Hill, the top plates of existing, if we touch them, then that wall counts against mm -hmm. the 50%. Uh, we are not touching the existing seal plate framing members and the top plates not not adding any additional height on top of any existing top plates that's not what i said okay that's a big deal adding we are not touching the existing top plates seal plates or the framing members we are adding a pony wall on top of the existing top plates there is nowhere in policy 3 that prevents us. It even goes further and say, when you add that, then you comply with the setback, which we have done. So it doesn't prohibit it. The only th thing it says is that if you add to the height, then that has to comply with the setbacks and we've done that. So you are allowed to add based on the existing rule uh, to the wall height, as long as you do not touch the existing seal plate, framing members, and the top plate. Uh, and the view corridor, we don't have a view corridor there. By definition, view corridor is a tunnel. It's not an expanded line. And you are correct. By eliminating that addition, Commissioner Hill, Hill we have added to the view corridor, but not significantly. But we've done what we could. That's really sincerely, that's what we did. As far as the square footage is concerned, the permit that you are referring to, Commissioner Hill, that gets you to 4161, it was not final. It wasn't inspected. There is another permit that says 4,274. Yes. And that is the one that if you look at the back of the permit or the reverse of the permit, it has a final date. 
That's what the permit is. Yes. Based on that, whether you add the 230 square feet or whether, I think that's where you get the 45. Am I correct to say that? Uh, yeah, adding the 4274 plus the 230, that gets you to the 4504. Okay, so at 4504 divided by two, we can add 2,252 square feet. I'm doing that mentally. 2252. 2252. We're adding 2,252 2, square feet. All we are adding is 2,217. So by your calculation, and that's leaving aside that the garage and uh, the square footage that you're referring doesn't include the garage and the guest house. Even if we leave that aside, which we cannot, those days the permits did not include the garage and the guest house because of a lot of different aspects of it. But if we take your number, 4504, if I'm wrong, tell me, Commissioner Hill. And we divide that by two, we get to 2,252. All we are adding is 2,217. That means we are, with your calculation, at less than 50%. Is there a permit for the guest house? I could not find a permit for the guest house. There was, doesn't mean it wasn't permitted. Uh, and, 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 and in addition, all of those things, the LA County Assessor's Office says this house is 5,793 square feet. Mm -hmm. Those include the, exclude the garage. And um, so. Let, let me comment, Commissioner. I bought the house from the broker and the seller at 55,793 square feet. And that's what I've been paying for in property taxes. And that's the LA County Assessor's Hall. That's the FYI. That's all. So, and we are way below that. Yeah. Well, it's just a relevant a, number. Yeah, as an aside, it, it, we tend to treat the assessor numbers as irrelevant because they're not reliable. But it, it is strange that you would be paying for what is apparently a bigger number than your actual square footage. Correct. Okay, let's Correct. take your numbers then. We are still yeah. under. No, I'm just I, I, at this point. I I accept a lot of what you're saying. I'm just I, I'm now curious about the guest house, and I don't. How big is that? It seems like we're close to the threshold that you would be going over. And how much? How big is the guest house? Two hundred. That, that was built before cityhood. So it doesn't matter. Yeah, yeah. It was built before before the city was yeah. there. It was built in eighty six. Nineteen eighty five. The first permit was eighty four. So uh, what the final was in eighty five. Yeah. But uh, since seventy two, you need a permit. Yeah, yeah. we have a permit. permit. We have a permit. That doesn't mean the guest house. The guest house could have been lumped in and with the county. That's what they're saying. They it's can't just, find that. What all I'm trying to do here is is pin down a legitimate basis uh, for the existing square footage. It just it seems like it's been a really squirrely number. Um, I mean, I guess it sounds like they're close to being able to meet the 150. I, I don't I don't know if they exactly meet it or not. I It's hard to tell. We don't have all the numbers. So we are below that. We are below the 150 percent. And uh, the even that what I said doesn't include the guest house or the guest quarter that even leaving that aside based on your own number, based on the permit that was issued, we are below 50%. The fact that there is no permit, what does that mean? That we cannot do what the uh, owner uh, legally should really, in a fair situation, be able to do. We've done everything to comply, everything. And you know what's not right? Last time that we were there, it seemed the only issue was the 50%. Now, Every, all the issues are coming out. I wish that if any of the honorable commissioners had any issue, they would have talked about it then, not one by one. What guarantees that next time we have a hearing, someone else doesn't come up with the color of the sky? Because it's a de novo hearing where anything that is presented before us, we can consider. What's it's, it's, it's the way hearings are done. Thank you, gentlemen. Gentlemen, excuse me. We need to limit this to just kind of factual questions to the applicant. This kind of back and forth is is not is not very very helpful. So once again, if the if the if the if the commissioner has a factual 
question for the applicant. Of course, that's the case, but this type of is not helpful. Thank you. Okay, so just one last question following up on that. Uh, how do we process the neighbor's uh, offer that uh, that in December 2016, a septic inspection was conducted in noting that the house has five bedrooms and 62 fixture units, uh, indicating that one bedroom and 15 plumbing fixtures were added between 2015 and 2016. Uh, what, what, why do we have a discrepancy between a four bedroom house with a certain number of fixtures and a five bedroom house with certain number of fixtures? They're getting, they're getting a new system. What are we talking about? We're talking what, about. We're talking about what the existing, so the size of the existing house was. What, what, why, what motivates the neighbor to, to say it's a five bedroom house when what we've been given in front of us is a four bedroom house? I think that what motivates the neighbor is that the neighbor doesn't want to see anything change next door to him. Well, yeah, but the neighbor has the right to ask if something's hinky. And and they, and they have an Absol attorney. Uh, there's no, absolutely they do. But I, I, I really feel that. They have an attorney who's putting forward numbers that presumably they're not just pulling out of thin air. That's debatable. Right, right. and we also have a staff that's put forth numbers that seem to be ones that are below the 50% rule. So I just don't see how we keep. This keeps okay. coming up and being it, well, I, at 49 or it's at 35 or it's 30. You still have to treat it the same. Well, there's some question about whether what they're saying is correct. But they're not in the house and everybody's rocked this house. Everybody's seen this house. Yeah. And, and question, there guys? are we have a a policy planning department policy number three that we're trying to go over. That's why we're having this hearing. OK. No, I'm just asking questions, <laughs> so, things that aren't clear. So oh, yeah, some, some like of these to, things have been cleared up. Thank you. Some of them. Uh, is the architect still on? Does anybody know? He's here. Well, I mean, is he been locked up again or is he? No, still? he's he's unmuted. Okay. Uh, I just want to read you that, that paragraph you said I was wrong on, on C. And it says, quote, increasing, increasing or decreasing the height of an exterior wall or altering the roof line unless it can be <laughs> demonstrated that no structure alterations to the existing walls are proposed or are required the, re the removal of any, any frame material. Now, this is adding and subtracting, okay? Now, when you look at the elevations I pointed to you, you cannot come up with a square front without adding. You can't do it. It's impossible because I didn't, be... didn't add. I said we added. Look, I'm yeah. sorry. I'm, I'm just uh, reading Rashad, this. Rashad, hang read on. It. Everybody stop. Everybody stop. I want to bring in the building official. I want to bring in Ms. Bundy to, to help with this. I want her to speak right now. I want to finish reading the no, you already read it, and he no, told you. No, you can't consider what we're considering, the policy? I can't ask a question about Later, you the already policy? asked it. You already I'm asked trying it. to finish reading this. Let Ms. Bundy How is she going to answer me if she doesn't know what I'm saying? Well, we know that. Let her read it then first so we can hear the whole thing. Okay, uh, point of order, Patrick Dugan. I was stopped from debating this issue. Point order. So there's a, there, there, there's no motion on on, on the floor. The, 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 the chair's prerogative here. I assume that the chair will go back to you, Vice Chair Mazza, after after uh, Director Bundy here speaks. Correct, Chair Smith. Go ahead, Yolanda. Thank you. Good evening, Planning Commissioners, and um, thank you for the opportunity to be here this evening. I understand and and. And just going over the question for the policy three, procedures A, section one, C, increasing and decreasing the height of an exterior wall or altering the roof line unless it can be demonstrated that no structural alterations to the existing walls are proposed or require, nor the removal of any of its frame frame materials. 
The policy continues stating, note that the in case where the height increases or the roof line alterations add to the volume of the nonconformity, such as but not limited to the primary view and the ocean view impacts set setbacks, high or total development square footage, the project will also require a discretionary request. I'm here this evening to talk about the interpretation of the first portion of this uh, policy. And one item that can help us better demonstrate what the engineer has provided, and the engineer is also here, is exhibit four. So if you can, uh, if I please can have that on exhibit four. You also got a response from the structural engineer on your March 2nd, 2023, because um, this item was already raised. And I'm just gonna read from where um, the engineer responded to you. And if he can, if I can please have the exhibit four on the screen, so it's better for the um, for everybody that is present to see what is exactly happening on this area, and also the engineer uh, Garrett Miles can add to it. Do we also have this in our packet? Yes, you have that on your packet. You have a letter from the structural engineer dated March 2nd, 2023. Um, attachment number seven. It's, um, sorry to interrupt, it's page 102, if that's helpful. Anyone searching? And I'm going to get the exhibit put up. Yes. And if uh, the engineer also can be here uh, to add to it, um, that'd be great. This is his detail. So I'm just going for what it was uh, provided to the city and through the meetings that we had had with the structure engineer. I also did a site visit and the consistency in what we are interpreting the policy has been since I've been took uh, the position and October 11 of 2019. So as soon as you have already, let me know. Rebecca, can you unmute um, Mr. Mills, please? I've got exhibit four. Or Alex, there we go. Mr. Mills, thank yes, you. Yes, sir. So we're on that. Um, I'm just waiting for the exhibit to be put up, Mr. Mills. And I'm going out of your uh, letter that you uh, provide um, as a response to the questions. Yes, specifically, it, would you like me to share? Yes. Yes, please. Okay, thank you. So specifically, the question that was raised in the opposition letter that we responded to was that the exterior wall was being altered and that the exterior wall was no longer going to be load bearing. Uh, but we were demonstrating with our uh, engineering detail here in our analysis that the existing exterior wall is going to remain intact in accordance with the policy. We're not altering the top plates, none of the studs, nor the sill plate on either of the levels. We're not sistering in any framing members to this wall and the existing exterior wall will remain load bearing. Under this detail, you also find at the top of the, um, where the roof line is, that a new wall, non-structural, be offset from the, from the existing wall for the, for the architectural to comply with increase on the site setback. So this is non-structural element. It's not taking any uh, ver uh, vertical loads. It's not taking any seismic load. Uh, question. If you look at attachment four, you have a picture of the story poles. And they clearly show that the tips of the front of the building are cut off. Now, those are part of the building. They have to be the sill plate. They're, they are lowering the height of the building. Now, how do you lower the height of the building? It disappears without changing the wall. That's the first question. 
It's gone. So what exhibit are you talking about? I'm looking at the uh, the story poll picture, but I can show can you. you can you provide me with the number so we can it's have the engineer? Four. It's attachment yeah. four. And, and uh, attachment five. And the engineer is here. He can respond to that. Um, and then Alex and Parker, that's on my slide, a slide 11 story poll photographs. If we want to look at it, please. I, I can also show you in the plans, but this is very dramatic. It shows. <clears throat> I don't see a uh, an attachment for anywhere. It's the color pictures of the story poles. I don't see that anywhere. Got it's it right, right here. After, you got right it somewhere. The uh, city memorandum. Uh, is that we're talking about? History. It's right after the state lands commission letter. I can look on the PDF. Is there a PDF page number? Yes, I'll get that for you. On the PDF page number, it's um, page 91. Okay, I, I'll find that. Okay, now there's two two questions here. Are you removing something or are you adding something? Okay, first, it's impossible to come up with this residence, as you can see by the story poles, without removing the point of the what the ridge lines. It's right there. There's the story pole. There's the red line going across it. Sir, I think to clarify, I think if you look at the portion of existing exterior wall that is being counted as demolished. I believe that the majority of those walls are being counted again. Not the front wall doesn't appear on the, that. that uh, this is the street wall. Yeah, on the street side on the existing second floor on the uh, calculation, I believe those walls are being counted as against the 50%. Well, I don't see it. Um, and also in the front, same thing. If you turn the page, you'll look at the story poles for the front of the building. Same thing. Okay, this building isn't 24 feet. It's higher than that, the existing building. So you're slicing off the top, okay? Yeah, and those uh, and those areas are being calculated as uh, that are going to be removed. If you can, um, maybe the structural or the uh, architectural um, lay um, floor plan can show that better. What what plan is it? The, I can see it. The front the, the sides that have a bunch of stuff removed. Uh, only the only the front door of the garage. Well, maybe that's not that's red for some other reason, but. Uh, which plan is the calculation that shows uh, that? Parker or Alex, can we pull up slide? I'm sorry, number. Um, the other point five? I want to make. Wait, wait, wait. Let's one one point at a time. Well, it's yeah. There you go. Nothing red. Oh, sorry, this is proposed addition. So I'm sorry, number five on the demo plan. Yes, thank you. Where's the front of the building? So the south and the rear demo elevation that has been counted. Yes, but you and then the front of the building. If you look at a uh, um, elevation one demo elevation, and um, there is also a portion there that has been also counted. And you, you can... have a window, and and uh, a little section of the the building next to it. You don't have the whole wall. The wall has been altered it's been and that has over. and that has been counted as being removed that, why is it not red then i can have the architect uh, respond that for you okay because i don't show it in red on any of my my calculations so we can go one line by line so you so we can uh, understand exactly well, the okay. demo if that is what is um We'll make it clear for you. Which which plan shows the calculations that are the demolition the plan. Red. Okay. Is the architect in um in there? Can we okay, if you look at, up, please? If you look at uh A four hundred, that's supposed to show it. 
It shows nothing on the street side. Uh, may I? Yes, yes. Please. please. So, Commissioner uh, Meza, I remotely am guessing what you are referring to. And to really remove uh, your doubt, I can move that eight feet that I'm counting right under the part of the ridge that we are cutting, and therefore the numbers are the same. I'm not saying, I'm not arguing with you. I'm not, I don't want to go to a place of getting to nitty gritty wording of, but if that, if, if you want me to count that little area that you refer to, if I move the eight feet to that part, then they overlap and our calculation is correct. No, because this says increasing or decreasing, okay? The area between the ridges has been filled in. It's increased. Sure. Okay? That whole wall counts. No, no, no. That, so you have taken a wall with two points no, no, and made I, it square. I hear you. I hear you. I think, I think I'm trying to understand you. The area that we are filling that triangle we are not touching the top plate or the wall members. We are adding a wall to it for a moment, please. Entire. The area that we are cutting, I really, uh, if I move that window to the left and I overlap them, uh, then we will have counted them on the, on the, on the 50%. But I want to be redundant, if I may, and say where we are adding a wall on top of the existing plate without touching the existing plate, that doesn't count. That uh, director uh, has, has, has confirmed that, uh, Director Bundy, that because we are adding a wall on top of the uh, existing, uh, your, po your point has two points. I think I dealt with both. If I haven't, please tell me. Okay, I will tell you right now. Number one, Director Bundy is using her policies. I'm using policy three, okay? There's a five-year difference. One was approved by city council, one wasn't, okay? We're talking about policy, 50, oh, nice uh, policy three, okay? Yeah. And it says, note that in cases where the height increases, or the roof line alteration adds to the volume and a non conforming, uh, basically, structure such as been not been limited to primary view, ocean view, impact, setback height, or TDSF. We're adding to TDSF. What? What? You are making a bigger building. Okay. You are putting, you are filling in the second floor. Director Bondi correctly said that she's only. <laughs> with the first part of that uh, statement. The second part is the planning determination. That policy says, if you are increasing the height, you have to comply with the current rules as it, as at, uh, there is no TDSF here, number one. So let's that, put that, that aside. <laughs> we are complying with the setback and view corridor for any wall that we are adding. That's why you see that little two inches that we push the wall back in order to comply with everything that you are saying and asking for, not with what you are wishing, but what, what is on the book. No, I am reading this directly, directly from a piece of paper that the city publishes, policy three. And it says increasing or decreasing. So if you lop the top off of the building and you add some more to the other part of the wall to make it square, you are increasing and decreasing both. And there is the bell. And <laughs> in the case where you're increasing, it says just what I read. With all due respect, uh, Commissioner Massa, it's not the Bundy uh, policy. It's actually, I'm reading from the same document that you are reading. So um, I am not making my own, my own policies. I go through what that's has given me by the planning department. Okay, just how do you that, take, how I do just want to make that clear for the record. Okay, well, this is very clear. It's a paragraph. It's three sentences. 
Tell me how you increase and decrease a wall at the same time and you don't change it. Tell me how that, tell me how that happens. And I already explained to you the detail that they are not adding any structural members. Um, again, of course exhibit, they are. Exhibit, exhibit one, exhibit but four uh, has shown that. They are of course increasing it. They're making a flat roof. They're filling in a, a, a whatever you call it, a V. They're increasing volume. They're increasing volume. It says right in here, you can't do that. I don't know where you're not reading that. I don't think you're reading that document correctly, John. Oh, then tell me how I'm not. I'm reading it. No. The, the, Director Bundy just it. did. What? Director Bundy just told you that you were not reading it correctly. And well, you then have her read it to me and say why when it says when you increase a wall and, and that it counts. It doesn't count if there are no structural alterations to the existing walls that are proposed or required, nor the removal of any of its frame materials. That's why it doesn't count. Okay, and an existing wall that holds up a roof, which is what they've done, is filled in the, the valley. The roof doesn't just float there like a piece of canvas. Okay, they are, they are making a square, uh, what I know what they're doing. Architecture that is, they're making it flat and yes. bigger internal volume, and it has a roof on the area that they're filling in. If you go back to exhibit four, you will see that there is an, an adjacent stud that is taking the load bearing for that roof. I am sorry that you couldn't read that detail, but let, let's go back to exhibit four so we make it clear for uh for the uh, commissioner. That. It says if you increase the volume. If you increase the volume. So Vice Chair Mazza, you've got you've got a we have our director of construction here. I've got a I got a structural engineer that, that's been here and done work in Malibu. You've got an architect that's walked through our doors for over 20 years. These people know what they're talking about. And, and you I are don't. obviously missing and I don't the is vote. what you're saying. You are I'm missing reading the this. vote. I'm but reading this and okay. the director we, 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 cannot explain to me where it says increasing total development square footage, internal volume, setbacks. This does not quite require, it's a, it's a increasing, it's being built on a non-conforming wall. It says all that in here, every word of it. John, and we it have doesn't... a neighbor next door that's got a lawyer who knows that. And, 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 he's and we have, it sure. doesn't do any good to have somebody stand up here who, who is not following the policy and say, well, that's our new policy. That's pretty That's pretty insulting, Vice Chair, because you, these people, you, she you works. You have an insult me tonight? So, and, and so let's just, I do want to kind of lower the temperature here. Yeah, I totally I, I understand. Her to it's important. I know, you. Vice Chair Maza, I, 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 I believe that, 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 that your your position is, is well understood. I I'm sure Director Bundy has forgotten that. more about this stuff than I'll ever know. She understands it. She has responded to it. Your colleagues all understand it, and, and, and it is up to them whether or not they. Well, you're not going to shut me up because it takes three. I'm not. To shut me I, up. I, I'm not trying to shut you up, sir. From, I'm, I, I'm just trying to lower the temperature. Director. I'm just trying to lower the temperature. Let's, okay, let's, let's conduct this in a, 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 you know, pursuant to our rules of, of decorum, and, and the floor is yours, Vice Chairman. Okay, Mark. note that in cases where the height increases, roof line alterations add to the volume of a non conformity. Which it does, such as, such as limited to view impacts, setbacks, heights, or total development square footage. The project will require a dis uh, discretionary request, which we don't have, and our approval. <clears throat> that, and that's what it says. I'm not making this up. What is the nonconformity that has been added to? The the sidewalls they are they're too close to the uh, they don't have a conforming side yard setback. It's and the so very this what we're talking about. This so this your your contention is that this volume increase increases that nonconformity by sticking out further in some way. Yes, by making it higher and lower. Okay. Okay. Look. 
and and it's clear as a bell and and, and i don't care it, it's always clear as a bell you yeah. have when you read something in english and it says something i don't care what degree you have and i don't care who hired you and and i don't care if the applicant says it's true it's plain as day obviously not to you vice chair well yeah. No, no. This is going to court. You know it, and oh, you, can, you can read it. You can read it. Oh, it's not going to court. You got two big time lawyers talking to each other. Yeah. First of all, let me see. Let me point out something that that you you might have misunderstood. The policies that are in this book are staff policies, and you, you stated that it was approved by the city council, and you misspoke in that. These policies do not go to the city council. They are not approved by city council. They are statements of the planning department of how they are intending to interpret, in this case, the statement in the LIP that uh, if you remove more than 50% of the walls, uh, you well, can't I be a remodeler. I'm situation. sorry. I, I, excuse me, John. Here I am talking while you're trying to interrupt. Uh, that is what this policy is, and it is the staff's policy that they're now telling us this project complies with, right? No. This they're one telling us that? Races, which is a city council ad hoc committee. Yes. Which for is. races, every single policy did. And, and, and Zo races has two members on it specifically for the period to avoid it being okay. a body so saying, acting on by as the city council. What you're saying is a non-planning director can change a published city policy. I'm not, first of all, nobody is changing a published city policy. But what I am saying is that it is just a policy. It's not law, it's just a policy. It's the way that the planning department conveys to the public, this is how we intend to interpret this provision. Except That's they it. didn't say that. They said we are interpreting uh, number three, LIP policy number three. And by the way, we changed it now. In, in, in writing, say, by the in, way, we changed it. In writing LIP policy number three, what staff is saying is this is how we are going to apply the requirement of when you can be and when you cannot be a remodel. And this policy number three is the way we're going to interpret that requirement. Okay, I have a question to Richard. Are you going to republish this policy? Or are you going to leave this out there and let every other person read it and get it wrong? <laughs> I, I, I'm sorry, Commissioner Mazza, but you know, our building official is implementing the policy as this was written. We have one of our staff members was one of the people who wrote this policy, and so I, I do defer to him. And as uh, Commissioner Jennings stated, this this one was something that a planning director signed on her way out the door. And the the change in roof height here, uh, I'm assuming you're talking about the front yard because there's about yeah, perhaps the front yard and the backyard. They're both being changed. Just look at the story poles. Correct, but you, you seem to be focused on nonconformities, and there's no increase uh, or reduction, I should say, of the string line. The side yards are in excess. I mean, it, it's minor, but they are in excess of what is required by the code. Um, perhaps the front yard, and Jessica can double check this because there's an addition involved, but I believe that complies. Um, Jessica, are we one foot into the front yard? You're right on the the, the required front yard setback or the existing um, existing is at 19.6 feet, and the required setback is 20.6 feet. Um, but there's no uh, addition of square footage being added in the front yard. Hey, let me. Can I interject here now? Because I I was not understanding John fully until just this moment when you said that. My concern that I wanted to just ask John was, what is the nonconformity to which they would be adding volume? That's where the problem is. In well, this. Example, wait, hang on, hang on, hang on. 
if there's a nonconformity and you're adding volume to it, then that's a problem. What we just heard, I think, if I if I heard correctly, was that the setback is not as far as it's supposed to be. So we we have about a foot there where we we are adding volume within that one foot of nonconformity. Is that is well, that the nonconformity that. you're pointing to? Well, much more than that, you are filling in the central. Uh, if you look at the okay, but that's not a nonconformity, right? The nonconformity here would two, be the two. The wall that's and... getting sliced off is a nonconformity, so you can fill in a nonconformity, which is the front yard setback. You're, you're taking the the hallway that's now going to become part of the building and filling it in. You're saying you we, we'd be filling in volume within the non-conforming area within that. Yes, one. and this doesn't say anything about that. It says when you are increasing or decreasing the height. Or could I make could I, could I make a suggestion, John? If you feel that strongly about it, could you make a motion deny recommending that this project be denied and see if your motion has legs? Well, I got many other things to make to keep going on before I do. Well, that. but but all of them lead to the same point where you're going to deny the project. So what? No, difference not necessarily, make? but we can make them follow the the rules. I mean, all of a sudden we're saying houses with peak roofs can become square. And by the way, we're just going to ignore the fact that it says you can't in increase or decrease. John. Nobody is ignoring that. They're interpreting it in a different way than you're interpreting it. They're saying that, that increasing it and making that and closing that area is fully in compliance with, with the reading of that they give of uh, and that I give of, of policy number three. And that's all they're saying. Uh, and so you know, you know, how long, how long are you going to repeat the same point over and over again until we can take a vote? I mean, it, it, ultimately, you have to be able to count to three. Okay, but you have to you have to explain what I'm saying correctly. And, and they, have. Is, they have a number of times. They no, have. This is okay, well, hang on. I'm, I'm just barely getting it now. I'm okay, barely increasing getting Increasing and decreasing. They are adding to part of it and taking off part of it. That's what this paragraph is about. Okay. And it's about whether the height increase or roof line alteration. There's a roof line alteration from the ridge to the flat and it sounds like we are indeed adding to the volume of the foot of setback that uh is that we're lacking aren't you in fact decreasing it if you're going if you're knocking off the ridge aren't you decreasing the volume of the unconformity i think we're probably or definitely yeah. adding more volume to the side corners than the than the the point that was there because we're mm -hmm. filling in those sides. If I you see just, what you're saying. If you just cut off the top of the points, that's that's the architecture is correct. That's what you count. But you're not. You're filling in the V's. And it says you can't do that. If if it so just to be clear, that there is this this is a nonconformity that the setback should be what a foot a foot more than it was than it is. Is that accurate? Well, I have a question on that because I have a, a that's my next question. Uh, now we, we can skip this. I mean, you, you, you can just forget what I say, but it's it's right there in black and white. And if you're going to change it, publish it so the next architect knows what he's doing. Okay? What, what's the what's the depth of the discontinuity? It's, well, it's one on foot. both sides of the house. It's one foot. Um, but the architect is also available. Um, for a shot if you want to respond to that. Well, as well. Before you respond to that, I, I to just want to add that they're going over 24 feet also. Because they're adding a roof deck. They're at 23, 23 feet, inches. 11 inches. They're at 23 feet, 11 inches. And the roof deck structure roof. around the roof deck is 11 right. an inch. 23 feet, 11 inches. The, the roof deck, the roof deck, if you want to look at uh, drawing number. Uh, yep. they're adding 42 inches i mean we don't let people do that and, and hang on this is which page is that Roof deck. while you're looking for that let me just point out what we're talking about here that if you do have this problem with the there is no roof deck whatsoever okay Hang on, hang on. on A401. 
there is a drawing of a roof deck. Yes. And it's above 2,400 square feet. It's the south elevation. Okay? It's there. Where? Where? Sorry. South elevation A401. Oh, okay. So, but John, the roof, the what you're talking about there is 23 feet 11 inches. It's not above that. Right? Not, no, no, that's not true. Yeah. That's a magnifying glass, and it says height 24 okay. feet at the base of the deck. Budget. John, it's 23 feet 11 inches. Uh, it says 24 feet. Commissioners, Commissioner Mesa, may I ask you on that same sheet, look at east elevation, please. Okay. The roof that you are saying, the glass, it's the side of the skylight that is shown from the half of the building towards the street. If you want me to explain that further, I shall ask you to look at A402, please, Jessica. Oh, I see the skylight, okay? It looked like a roof deck to me. I'm okay. wrong on the fact that it's a roof deck. Yeah, May I get it. I get it. I'm correct. You're correct on that. Can, it, can we just I, go I, back I to this? All you need to do is look at the front page of the what you got. You're taking a, a pointy roofed house and you're making it square. Every every thing that's filled in counts and everything that's cut off counts. It's right okay. in the policy. But John, John, I'm almost with you, but on this question about the adding volume to the nonconformity, the remedy here proposed in the in the policy is if you have that, the project would also require a discretionary request. We don't have a request for that. That's what I'm saying. So it sounds, I mean, if we had one, what, how, how, would you vote? I'm you, if going you, to ground. Put one before us, then you, you could fix it if you have the findings for it. It's not Commissioner there. Hill, are you talking about the one the 19 foot six and the 20 foot six on the setback? Yeah, if it's a foot deep, then we're pro we're adding probably I don't know twenty cubic feet of volume that's against this. So, so we could do that. Plan, hang on, Senior Planner Bobbitt. This is a house that's been sitting there since 1985 or 86. Am I correct? Correct. Yes. So what are we what are we talking about here? How can you move something or make something less? Nobody's talking about that. Then why are you worried about a, some kind of a square footage or some kind of a setback? I'm what I'm saying is that the, it's an existing it's an existing nonconformity. This would add to the volume of that by changing the uh, the roof line uh, and the height for that. Well, who cares? The height is the the height is not relevant. The roof line alteration is what is significant. And if you're going to do that, you need a discretionary request. Okay, hang on. So it Director, sounds like it sounds Director like Malika. That. Director Malika, go. Thank you, Chair. I, I I want to set some context here. The direction the commission's going, well, I, I, I say commission, but I, I know it's there's no vote yet majority, but the direction we're heading <laughs> is a direction that the city has not taken. When it looks at height, because a lot of this remodel policy is based in the non-conforming section of the code, it talks about increases to building heights. And building height has been considered and verified by the the uh, Coastal Commission, when we've had this issue with remodels and 10% additions, it's it's the highest point of the structure. So when the, the non-conforming code talks about increases to building heights, the practice of the city has been when they place a second floor on a one-story building, that is considered a new increase in height and Definitely, we have required setbacks and an example uh, compliance with current setbacks, regardless of the building's footprint. And an example of that was the PCH home that uh, Renika presented, senior planner Brooks presented to this commission a couple <coughs> of meetings ago. Um, I'm, I'm blanking right now on the address, but it was uh, east of the Malibu Pier. And that's where you saw, as part of that remodel, the new second floor, which was a an increase in height in that area shifted back to meet the code's requirements. In the case of what you have here, 
the height of the building is at 24 feet, the old building, and I think this new one's at 23.6. This is something that the city has not in the past treated as an increase in height. There was a second floor there, it was 24 feet tall. I understand that some of the commissioners have some concern that a, a, a pitched roof is being flattened out and there's some growth there on the ends. Uh, but I would like to say, because I feel like there's a lot of discussion going here, ripping into the remodel policy, this is not the way it's been applied. Um, if there's a majority vote, of course, we'd be willing uh, to look at it and make it more standard in the future. But uh, the architect here has followed what the city has done in the past, as well as the planner. Well, and Richard, Richard about de increasing. This policy says increasing or decreasing. And it, and it talks it, specifically about adding to existing walls to make them taller. Part of this is going up and part of it's going down. And this it, policy says increasing or decreasing. It expressly calls it altering the roof line, which is what we're doing. But it's not, it's Richard, not a new thing. It's, Richard, it's what a, is, Richard, what does this imply about requiring a discretionary request? How would they do how would they make that how what would that affect our decision making tonight why would they need it they don't need because it. this policy states they need it so it uh, that goes to my, <laughs> my point about if someone were adding if somebody came to the department and said hey i want to i want to add a second floor you know and, and the side my side yards don't conform they but they want to maintain that that same side yard, they could then ask for a discretionary request so that the side yard could be reduced for that new height, that new wall that's being put in. Uh, but in this case, there wouldn't be one because the wall is already there. And we have, and, and, and the building official could speak to this in better detail than I, but there have been situations where the, the top plate's been maintained and They've put framing on top of it and, and modified the roof and raised it, but they've maintained the wall. And, and, and the building official can speak to that a lot more eloquently than I can. Well, nonetheless, this is roofline alteration that adds to the volume of the nonconformity. That seems pretty black and white. And it's more than increasing. It's increasing and decreasing. Okay. It's not, it's, it's both. They're filling in, they're filling in air. There's air there now and they're making it a, a, a a wall that's adding they're they're chopping the top off the the uh the ridge line that's <laughs> tracking they're both covered they're both covered specifically in this policy okay director mazo i mean so okay i got another Go ahead, question we'll just drop let's have, drop this let's have a motion somebody it's getting late <laughs> well and there's yeah make a motion this whole project director, make a motion please um, I'd like to make a motion to follow staff recommendation approving um, planning commission uh, resolution 23-19. And the only condition I would like to put on it is that the trees that are currently in the view quarters on both sides of the property, um, kind of more out in the front yard setback area, are removed and that those remain clear and open so the public can view the ocean. And, and I then, want to make a comment before then, somebody seconds to Mr. Donegan. You cannot shut off debate by making a motion, correct? Correct. The only formal way to end debate, and I guess call the question, I believe is that it's a two-thirds vote. Um, typically, we don't do that. It's kind of more of just a consensus that everyone is done speaking. But the formal way to end, end debate, whether that be on, a, on an item or in this case, a motion, would be a a a, a two thirds vote to to do so, and so I want to bring up one item that will put this all in question that maybe we can get an answer on. I got we uh, we were sent the plans for uh, the it's it's called sheet one of one. Uh, it's the rock revetment and it shows the building. Okay, it's it's this one if you know it. Okay, and it shows in the front of the building 
and I think Jessica has this, uh, it shows two parcels. One parcel's on the road. It's called parcel two. It's on the road right away, and the garage has a zero setback. Not 19 feet. It's zero setback from the roadway. Zero. Okay? That's a major nonconformity. And it's it was passed through the Planning Commission. It was given the it's shown. It's and uh it's the one that shows the rock revetment and the deck on it, and it's called topography, but it's really by peak surveys dated one eight two thousand and fourteen. It's the second page of what we have stapled together, right? I don't know. I got so many pieces of paper floating around here. But what is parcel two? Why is it on the road? And why is there no setback from the road? Is it, there's zero setback. Yeah. And and that's, you know, a, a pretty big deal. Well, okay, John, hang on. There are two... There are two roads here. There's the an abandoned right of way, and then a road. Malibu Road right on it, and it says no. But there's 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 a uh, an area between the current road and the garage that is uh, there's a label to the upper right that says abandoned right of way, sort of implying the road used to be. Further out. Well, it's another parcel. Why is it another parcel? I don't see the abandonment. Does it have something to do with the fact that that used to be the highway? Maybe. Well, maybe, but yeah. we're apparently looking at something that is less than an inch from the road. That's right. Malibu Road was Pacific Coast Highway. Yeah, but that doesn't mean it isn't. You know, it's now Malibu Road. Why don't we ask somebody who might know something about this? Yeah. Yeah. So I would think Jessica's got the thing. I would think she would, but we'll ask anybody you want. The architect has his hand up. <coughs> Can you unmute uh, Farshad, Rebecca, please? Yes. Uh, I am going to just uh, address the setback, right? Right. So I'll set back. You talked, uh, Commissioner Mesa, you talked about rock uh, revampment. That's in the back, right? You're talking about the front facing yeah. map road. Is that what we're talking about? Yeah, the front. Uh, it just happens to have the revampment. That's nothing yeah. to do with this. I'm learning what parcel two is yeah. and why is it shown on the road? 30 line, as we understand it and confirm what this surveyor is the thick line that is. Uh, about what 19 20 feet away from the face of the building that's where the property line is this was an old um, easement that was abandoned years ago that's what my understanding is based on the survey that we had uh, talked about with uh, the surveyor and i'm sure if uh, that i mean Plus, the, the existing setback is what is there. And the way we calculate the uh, what's what's called required setback is the averaging of adjacent. So if the existing is on the property and we are not pushing it further, it I think it's a mute. Uh, I mean, I don't mean to disrespect, to disrespect the commissioners, but the house is there. We are not doing a new house. That's an easement that was has been apparently abandoned. Our property line is the darker line, about twenty feet away from the property. That's all I know, and I yeah. won't. And, and I just, we had a house once that I went to the public works department because they had approved it on the highway, okay, and they admitted they made an error. It was on the highway. And and so I remember I had a house in front of you. Commissioner May, so you requested right before the meeting that we continue and go deal with the uh, DOT 
And we did that, and the DOT was correct in our case, and then we came back and you approved it. Yeah, I, I, I'm willing to approve anything, but we have this little funny weird dotted line running across it. I don't know I, what that is either. Not my expertise. I just work here. Yeah, but I, I'm just saying, what is parcel two? I mean, we should know that. We should know whether it's been abandoned. I you know, to go back and us it was abandoned. The parcels and so on. It's beyond my uh, but brain. If, if, if we're not moving the house, if forward, we are not I'm moving not, forward, I'm not moving the house. I'm not, and you don't have to move the house. It's on. It's on your property, and they approved it. But that doesn't mean that is in the legal setback as the 2002 LIP said it says it should be. It depends on where. What if it's not? But nobody's changed anything, Vice Chair. The house has sat there for 20 some year, 30 years. We have thousands of houses in Malibu that are maybe hundreds that have been here for 50, 60 years. And wow. a lot of them don't meet setbacks. We know that. We know that. Okay. This is a well, non issue. This is a non issue. Non -issue when you say you have to be within, you have a non conformity. You have to, when you say the setback's 20 feet when it's really zero, that's not a non issue. It doesn't mean the building itself is illegal. It means it's non-conforming. Hang on. Richard has his hand up. Presumably this issue ha applies to all kinds of houses on Malibu Road, if, if our hypothesis is correct. Chair, if I may, that it's identified as an abandoned right away on the on that sheet. They, they did identify it. It's on the east side of the house there. They did identify that area because it's been my experience on this portion of Malibu Road. There, there are essentially two 20-foot easements. And one of those, the one closest to the home, uh, that has been abandoned. The next one is still active. That little area that was just asked about, uh, it's identified as two feet wide it's item number 10 it's a it's a overhead wire easement uh, on on this particular property uh, this particular property and other ones in that area so the the actual front property line is as the architect explained it's about 20 feet or roughly in front of the house there 19.6 i guess and it, it it is the it's kind of hard to see but it's the darker of the lines uh, so, so that, that, that parcel two is divided by two it's two different things? Um, it is all, uh, I just looked at the tax map. It's all the same property. Uh, I, you know, I've, this is one of those situations where I'm sure there's some ex assessor lingo here as to how that happened, but it is shown as one parcel. And what you have is basically it was an abandoned right away that now these folks have and like i said we've run into this situation before where we'd have a problem is like on that other malibu road house i'm talking about it's a couple doors up uh that person tried to show their front property line is all the way out to the fod line on the roadway and that was a problem they didn't have 40 feet in front of their home okay it could be two parcels tied by a covenant so um, yeah i mean just we never got told here. we never got told go ahead that. I just wanted to say, uh, and I meant to say this earlier, and I totally spaced, but it is now 1115. I do not see us getting to the hotel tonight. I'd like to make a motion to continue that item to the next hearing. I'll second that. Why not just have a special meeting? I'm fine if you guys want to consider a special meeting. I'm 100% open to that. We're, we're, we're already loaded for May 1st or whatever it's going to be. Uh, I just I just want to request that if there's a special meeting set, we just went through two months of giant reports right after each other with a couple of special meetings thrown in. Give us a break so we can catch up a little and have a, an easy meeting before it or something because... You know, if you go through this and you're thorough and you actually read it, it takes a while. Okay. There's no, there's no we've question. Had time. That. We've had time to read everything and watch everything unfold, but I'm thinking maybe the well, apparently you don't, but, uh, gentlemen, come on. Okay. So, so I, that's that I, I've seconded your motion, Skyler. 
I, I appreciate that. I don't know if we need to get one of the people that are related to that project online here to make sure that we can do a date that we're going to suggest right now. Um, so, uh, Alex and Stephen Hakeem are present in the meeting in terms of the applicant team. Um, I would like to confirm with Richard and Patrick on times that might work for them. The next meeting, um, we are going to be covering the rest of the TUP ordinance, and I don't feel like we have room on May 1st. Um, Agreed. May 15th, we have a couple of other CDPs, but we could potentially at least begin it there. Um, in terms of special meeting dates, we're running into a little bit of an issue with other commissions having evening meetings um, and city council had to reschedule their special meeting. The only dates I was able to identify in the last uh, several minutes were 518, which is a Thursday, or 5. 31, which is a Wednesday night, and I don't see an evening meeting on either of those days. Okay. Um, can we make it, can we make it a date uncertain and then have you guys actually find a real time and come back to us and then we can set the date? Is that permissible? She just, she just gave us dates. I, I would feel more comfortable if we set a date now. That way, everybody yeah. knows what's Absolutely. going. Absolutely. So, as, was the first date that you said the eighteenth, the Thursday? Um, we well, you have the potential for like, it, I mean, this would be a continued item, so it would begin in the four category. We could add it to the meeting for the fifteenth, and then just see how far we can get with the other items scheduled for that day, what or we that? could do a special yeah. meeting. That would that would be on May fifteenth, yeah. or we could do a special meeting on May eighteenth, which is a Thursday that same week. I don't know how the rest of the commission feels, but I would feel um, I think it would be intelligent for us to schedule a special meeting for this because all we're going to be doing is delaying other people's projects. This is yeah. already played. Great. I, and I would suggest that we go with May eighteenth, provided that the applicant is available on that date. I agree that a special is a good idea, but I don't know about three days later after a regular. That seems a little tight. Uh, that's real tight. Uh, I have I have a conflict that day, um, which I don't think I could change. Is would there be Probably anything wrong with us doing but, uh, a special meeting earlier in the day? Well, we have a problem on something like this, where the public will be cut out. Yeah, a certain amount of the public actually have jobs. Um, and I think this is like one of the biggest things that ever hit Malibu. Wednesday, uh, the 31st could be okay, as you suggested, if the meeting on the 5th following is not too heavy, so we don't have a huge reading load. Wednesday, the 31st of May, right? Yeah. Correct. Well, with May. And then there's a meeting on, on June 5th, so if, if the reading load wasn't deadly for the fifth maybe that one would work yeah um how big is the fifth meeting i would prefer a date one of the dates in may may 31st we're talking about yeah. or 18th if... well as they say i have a conflict on the 18th. oh okay so i have a conflict on the 31st but i'll move it i'll make well, it work we could may do it on the first is that good May 1st is a Monday. Isn't that our normal no, day? June 1st. Oh. It's, how busy is June 5th so far? What's wrong with May uh, 31st? Well, I, I'm saying it, May 31st if June 5th isn't too busy already. A lot too much hey. reading. Um, Director Malika, would you like to weigh in on your preferences here? Yeah. Um, the 31st is fine. I'm trying to bring up actually I'm trying to jump onto my remote desktop to bring up our. I'll our send you, I'll send you a snip in just a moment. It'll just take me a second. 
You don't see the 26th or the 27th of this month working? Well, you know, you're talking about ruining people's Fridays. but uh, That's a Wednesday and Thursday. Um, um, you're talking about April? April, yes. This needs to get done. I, I it can doesn't ask. need to get done. A week I, is, you know. Okay, I'm sorry. So you'd like to look back in, in this month. Let me go backwards. I uh, absolutely please. can't do the 27th. I think what I was running into in April when I was checking the potential dates was that, well, now, <laughs> now the issue I'm running into seems to be that the website's uh, <laughs> moving for me. Here we go. Uh, we have a lot of evening meetings already scheduled that would conflict. Uh, so I'm looking for times where there are, is not already an evening meeting. Um, so... so the, the I'm sorry, this discussion is taking a lot longer than I thought we were originally I, had in mind. Why yeah. don't we go back and finish the item we're on? Then yes. after that, we can sit and talk about where we want to move this. Good idea. Not saving yeah. anybody any time. They yeah. know okay. that they're not going to be. Yeah. I, and I'll just throw out there that if we want to try to do this in April, we're looking at Friday nights at this point, I think. <laughs> How do okay, can manage? <laughs> uh, you had made a motion, um, Skyler, uh, and I'm going to second it now. I never got a chance to. Okay. okay. So, Commissioner James, it, it, that was a motion on the on the on the project that we're on, correct? That's correct. Yes. Yeah. Right. And I have another question. Um, this is for Jessica. The Craig asked earlier about messing with revetments and you know we've always had always put in provisions at the coastal commissions they always used to put in provisions and all these revetments date back to them about not messing with repairs um this particular project changes the revetment they're putting in they're putting in drains because it's going to overtop and fill up the the uh, the lot. It's 100% FEMA, and I'm wondering what happens when it overtops and fills up with water. What happens with the septic system and this and the tanks and everything? And then two, are we under any restriction on messing <laughs> with the revetment? What and I'm, I'm sorry, I wasn't aware that there was a change in the revetment. What sheet are you referring to? They changed it when they did the uh, 2018. I think it was when they did their. That's what this drawing was all about. Uh, that was uh, 2014 about adding the rock volume and putting the deck in and all that stuff. It's in the staff report. Okay. And then and then now we have sea rise, which we're basing on when the house was built in 85. But even with cutting down the, the limit from eight and a half down to four and a half or something, we still are gonna flood hundred percent of the septic system and drain field. So number one. Do we have to consider that? And how do you keep it from working? How do you get it to work when it's covered with water? And number two, the real question is, can we mess with the revetment or is it restricted? Jessica, there's, correct me if I'm wrong, there's no proposal here to modify the revetment. It was previously permitted for a repair. Uh, proposal. There's a proposal to put drain holes in it. As part of this project before us? Yes. Where? And which sheet um, is that on? I'm sorry. Yeah, I can't. I never I can't find it. It's, it. It talks about it's when it talks about overtopping and they're going to have drains so it can drain back into the ocean when it overtops. Uh, it's in here somewhere. Under, uh, in 2014 or 2023? 2023. Is it under on the environmental health referral, perhaps? Probably. It's it's under where they, uh, Lauren Doyle calculated the overtopping. 
or the coastal engineering. And then she uh, said, yeah, then they said, you got to have drains so the water can get out once it overtops. I got to, you know, it's in here somewhere, but I don't know if you remember, we can find the section that talks about the restrictions on overtopping and how many feet, how how they calculated the flood zone. It's in there. Uh, okay. Um, well, okay. is overtop the actual word used? Yeah. One uh, word. My memory, I, I'm reading this thing. Um, let's see here. Search overtop. Yeah, I'm searching. You're talking about a septic tank that's in the front yard now, right? The whole uh, property is FEMA flood zone. The yeah, this property. is this is this is PDF page sixty six, a coastal engineering review sheet. Um, I'm not Let's see if I can find it in my notes, but it's. Coastal engineer states that drains shall be installed behind the revetment to allow water to drain after overtopping the revetment. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Are the existing drains adequate to handle the volume and velocity of overtopping, or will water pond on the grade behind the revetment and potentially flood the house? If a new drain system is required, please provide updated plans. Da -da -da -da. That's what I found. Now, that's kind of serious because it affects your your septic system and then it runs into the ocean and blah blah blah. That's one question. The other question is, are we allowed to punch holes in the wall? It's supposed to hold stuff out instead of let it out. The the septic's in the front yard, not by Malibu Road. Yeah. What are you talking about? It floods the hundred percent of the property. Hundred percent, not ninety nine. Muted, oh. Is is the concern here sea level rise in relation to this hundred foot hundred yeah. year flood where the property yeah. that's in the prohibition that's supposed to one day connect to a wastewater system? I don't think this far down the Malva Road phase two covers them. But Are you, I, I think there might be anything. phase three or no. No, or phase three is phase two. Yeah. Isn't the whole reason why this is even coming through as a remodel permit under the fifty percent rule to mitigate that? No, that's because they they had nonconformities and they would have to correct them. So this this going in as a remodel, they don't have to. But um, I don't know whether we can easily find the last permit they got. But a, every other one I've ever seen on a on a rock revetment by the Coastal Commission said you can't touch it. Now, they obviously, somebody gave them a permit in 2014 to touch it, but they probably put in a provision you can't touch it again. Uh, so I don't know if we can give a permit to punch holes in it because it's supposed to hold water out instead of let it in or whatever the other way around. And then the real question is, can we certify the septic if it's going to be flooded? And I don't know if Lauren's still here or we've got an environmental engineer here, but this is a weird lot because, and, and they also, by the way, used the old sea rise study and it just changed. So I don't know if that factors anything. They raised it. So she says 4.8 feet, but she's using 2018. And they just changed it like what, 20, the end of 2022, right, Richard? Something like that. They raised Director, Director Malika, what am I missing here? I see rise. So we were we're not issuing a permit here for them to modify the rock revetment. The uh, and the coastal engineer talks about drainage holes in the deck uh, into the soil beneath. No, uh, he said he said in the revetment. Behind, behind the, the revetment. revetment. Not through. It's above the revetment. Not it's that behind the revetment is the exact word. Yes, the deck is above the revetment. And it goes on to talk about water that overtops the revetment onto the deck and how will it drain through the deck. 
Uh, and as far as I, I don't know if we saw the building official on the call, but as far as the wastewater treatment system, it's been cited as far landward as feasible. It's in the road. So at this point, it would have to essentially flood past the house. Um, but we've always put in provisions that says you, it can't float. It's got to do this. It's got to be sealed. It's got to be blah, blah, if it's going to be underwater. And this is 100% FEMA. John, we got a motion on the table. If you've got a motion to make, make it. No, I'm just I'm just making sure this is in the record because it's in the record. You seem to be missing something. It, it it's in the staff report. They talk about it, and also in the staff report, there's a review from the environmental health administrator stating that it it's meeting the qualifications to be there to to protect to serve this home. Okay, so. Do we just ignore whether or not there's a restriction on the house? There is none. How do you know? Have you it's read the 2014 report? They're not. That's we're not doing that tonight. That isn't what we're doing. No, that happened in 2014. Right. Okay. I wrote the 2014 report. I'm well I aware of the 20 percent of rocks uh, that they did. But once again, what they're doing here, we're not issuing a permit here tonight to modify, alter, add rocks. Uh, the, if you look at the findings, and, and Jessica, correct me if I'm wrong, I believe your last finding states that there's no alteration or, or proposed work to the existing revetment. That's uh, so correct. Staff, uh, in our documents we provided you, there's nothing there that would give them permission to alter that rock revetment. Okay, and we determined that you don't need it even though it's gonna flood. Yeah, they're talking about the deck. Uh, Coastal engineer Phipps was talking about the deck, and when the water got there, where does it go? Nothing else. Nothing else. Anything else, or can we take a vote? Well, okay. Uh, vote. I just wanted to put one last sentence in, uh, except the environmental guy and FEMA and the Coastal Wave Upright Study all says that the property is going to flood. Okay, John. You got your point. Okay, uh, can we take a, we have a, we have a motion in a second. Rebecca, can we take a roll call, please, for approval of staff's, rec, rec, staff's recommendation of this project? As the amended removal, to require. The removal of the trees. Yeah, the removal of the trees. Um, <laughs> Commissioner Peak. Yes. Commissioner Jennings. Yes. Commissioner Hill. On the basis that the roof line alteration does add to the volume of a non conform uh, and there's no discretionary request, no. Perfect. Vice record. Chair, Vice Chair Maza. Uh, ditto on what Craig said, no. Chair Smith. Yes. Motion carries. Okay, uh, as far as the uh, continuance of the motel. Okay, I, it seems I, I, to me that, and, and unless this is illegal, that staff needs to study a bunch of stuff. And what? the question is, can we continue it to a date uncertain and consider it at the next meeting? Is that if, if it is continued to no. a date uncertain, no. it would need to go through another 21 day public hearing notice which right. is actually more than 21 days because you need to build in time for the notice to be submitted to the paper and then for publication. Okay, so we have to notice it. So we so, have to pick a date and then we can always change that. Right? Correct. And I did send um, the what's on the agendas for upcoming meetings to Director Malika. And was... So... Oh. I'm sorry. I was wondering if you might have input on what you think would be our best course of action. Let's do it tomorrow. <laughs> so I, I, I think, Rebecca, I think the one thing here I, I think that we should explain, too, is we're coming up on the budget and a lot <laughs> of, a lot of the, the time slot the problems we're having, it, they need it for budget meetings or, or other subcommittees. And that's why we're having a hard time finding the availability of our media guys. But I think Rebecca, probably the best, if the commission is looking at only those two dates in May, I think the latter date 
uh, I think that's the 31st. Yeah, but Skyler can't be there, he said. No, he's no, he said he would. Okay, so I make a motion that we continue uh, the, um, that's a Wednesday after Memorial Day. And we have a meeting on the 22nd. So we'll have almost a week to read all this junk. No, well. I'm more concerned about the meeting on the 5th following that we don't have a whole ton of reading on that one. Yeah, can you just get I think that the here's the reality of this. Because if we have we've got a lot of stuff going on, there's going to be a lot of reading. It's our job to get to it. And I don't know really what else to say. But, we're we're gonna have, but no, no, hold on. If we're going to have meetings that are going till 1130 at night and we're wasting hours and hours and hours on things that are getting talking about in circles, for all of us, it is not productive. It is not productive for our community. So we need to be very diligent in how we're approaching these things. Obviously, Richard knows what the, what the schedule is, and we have to be sensitive at the utmost to our staff time. But, you know, we, you know, can't be going over this stuff on, on every meeting, taking this long, pushing multiple items to other meetings time and time again. It really just Fs up the whole system for everyone. It's not fair to anybody. So, so I, I just... I, I think that maybe I speak for maybe more than one of us here. Maybe I speak for all of us here, but that, that falls on all of us. And I, in my 14 years of going to these meetings, it's pretty much how it's gone. Well, and part of it is things coming back to us. So you're saying that if we had it on the 31st, a Wednesday, uh, and then we're going to have a meeting one, two, three, four, five days later, when can we get the material for the five day later meeting? Because we and when can we get the material for this? Because we're going to need we're, more than you, five you, have you already have hotel. them. You you will have the material. I mean, you will basically have the material for the hotel. We will simply be updating the resolution recitals to reflect that it's been continued again. Um, but you have the content. Um, so that should not require a lot of additional analysis from what you had to do for this meeting on um, the June 5th one. I'm very limited by when I get staff reports from our planners. Everybody's schedules are very tight. So we're, you know, we really, I, I can't promise that I would be able to get that out any earlier than our typical deadlines. Which would be when? Uh, typically, it's of 10 days prior to the hearing. Okay, Let me see. The pocket 25th? distribution would be the 26th okay. or the 27th. Um, <laughs> I, I think in the calendar we listed as 526, which is a Thursday, and the reality is that it goes out the following day on the Friday. We're talking May, right? Yeah, May 27th would be when that would go out. May 27th is a Saturday. Yeah, it would be 25th oh, or 26th. So then the 26th. Okay, so you're talking, okay. So we're we're considering having a special meeting on? On May 31st. Okay, and it'll be an evening meeting. Yep. Um, it would be a 6.30 p.m. meeting. Could we confirm with Stephen Hakeem that his team is available for that time? There he is. Can we unmute him? Yeah, there he is. Go ahead, uh, Mr. Hakeem. indicated the sooner the better. Yeah, um, thank you. Uh, we can make ourselves available for the 31st, and we agree we prefer a special meeting as well. So thank you. We'll be there. Thank you. Okay. Hey, so I make that motion. The 31st special meeting, we continue uh, item, whatever it is, to that date. 5B. And do I have a second? I will second it. Thank you. Vice Chair Mazza? Yes. Commissioner Peake? Yes, and I wish it was sooner. <laughs> Me too. I just cannot find a day. Um, Commissioner Hill? Yes. Commissioner Jennings? Yes. And Chair Smith? Absolutely. Motion carries. Okay, I move we adjourn. A second. Hey, Dennis, happy birthday. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Can you tell us how old you are? 
I just want to point out that this is really unconscionable. It's 20 minutes of midnight. It's ridiculous. Really. Vice Chair Mazza? Yes. Chair Smith? Yes. Commissioner Hill? Yes. Commissioner Jennings? Yes. Commissioner Peak? Good night. A belated <laughs> happy birthday to you, Dennis. You are adjourned. <laughs>